University and the weather in that empty stadium today. Meanwhile, we are live in Honolulu, Hawaii. Aloha. My name is Monica Domino. Thank you for joining us at the second annual Aloha Bowl. Welcome to Honolulu, beautiful Hawaii Nei. annual Aloha Bowl Classic. Today, it's the defending Aloha Bowl champion Washington Huskies taking on the defending national champion Penn State Nittany Lions. This game comes to you live from Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, Hawaii. Today's game is brought to you by Anheuser-Busch, Brewers of Michelob. Some things speak for themselves. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By United Airlines, serving more of the top 100 business centers than anyone else. Fly the friendly skies of United. By the Hawaii Visitors Bureau, who invite you to come visit all the islands of Hawaii. And by Kmart, K-Care Auto Center, with our promise of service, value, and satisfaction. We've got it good. Aloha, and Mele Kalikimaka. I'm Ray Scott. Welcome to the second annual Aloha Bowl. Welcome to one of the most enchanting places in all of this world. If ever that old adage about a picture saying more than a thousand words being true, this is certainly a prime example. I'm going to ask my colleague Joe Butita to join me now as we talk about this clash between the defending national champion Penn State Nittany Lions and the Huskies of Washington, perennial Pac-10 winner or contender, certainly. And the Huskies winners of the Aloha Bowl last year when they beat Maryland in the final seconds by just a point. So they've been here before. They know all the, the good things about this place. Uh, I don't think they'll be swayed. It'll be a fine football game. Penn State, though, has come through a long season, Ray. As most people know, they were 0-3 to begin the year after opening up with Nebraska, of all people. But Joe Paterno thinks they're a much better ball club now for having played Nebraska so soon. Very well. Wherever you are, throughout the world, literally, we are delighted that you were able to join us. And now comes that phrase that I knew sooner or later <laughs> we'd have to come up with. It's time that Joe and I go to work so that you can join with us in watching the second annual Aloha Bowl. Let's go to work, Joe. Okay, partner, let's do it. Honolulu and Aloha Stadium. We have great football in store for you today with two of the country's top football teams. So let's take a look at key personnel you'll be seeing today. The Washington Huskies are returning to Hawaii to defend their Aloha Bowl title. And they got here behind quarterback Steve Pallor. Not only can Pallor run, but he was the first team all Pac-10 passer as well. The Husky Arsenal features Danny Green, Washington's leading receiver, who caught five touchdown passes this season. Senior Dave Stransky is a deep threat as well. The Huskies' second leading receiver averaged over 12 yards per catch. The Washington ground game was number one in the Pac-10 this season, and Sterling Hines led the way. Hines rushed for over 800 yards and five touchdowns on his way to Honolulu. Like Penn State, the Huskies feature one of the country's toughest defenses. Vesti Jackson intercepted four passes this season and returned one, 66 yards for a touchdown against Arizona. J.C. Pearson joins Jackson to make up a tough, smart secondary tandem. Pearson recovered four fumbles this season and took this one out of midair and into the end zone for the touchdown. But Washington's defensive strength is up front. Tackle Ron Holmes had an incredible 13 sacks this year and has his sights set on Penn State's Doug Strang. The Nittany Lions can eat up yardage on the ground, so the key to victory for the Huskies could be linebacker Tim Meander. 
But the Huskies will have their work cut out for them. Penn State fans had little to cheer about early this season, but the defending national champs would not give up. And in the weeks that followed, they beat the likes of Syracuse, Alabama, and Notre Dame on their way to Honolulu. Quarterback Doug Strang threw 19 touchdown passes this season, seven of them to Penn State's all-time leading receiver, Kenny Jackson. But the Nittany Lions' real offensive strength is in their ground game, where they combine experience and youth. Senior fullback John Williams passed the great Franco Harris in career rushing this year on his way to a 2,000-yard career. Freshman sensation D.J. Dozier led all Penn State runners with over 1,000 yards, setting four Nittany Lion rushing records along the way. the trademark of great Penn State teams has always been defense, and this year is no exception. Scott Radisek is the latest in a long line of stars to come out of what many call linebacker university. The secondary, led by hero back Harry Hamilton, will have to stop the explosive Washington passing attack. They think they can do it if they can prevent Washington from establishing the running game. So the pressure is on Greg Catuso and his defensive line mates. Penn State must shut down the Husky offense if they want to come away with a victory in the second annual Aloha Bowl. So we have seen how the teams arrived at the second annual Aloha Bowl Classic. On the field right now, my colleague Joe Butita. Joe, how are things down on the playing surface? Ray looks pretty good down here. It's kind of windy, but to my left, here come the defending Aloha champion, Washington Huskies and Coach Don James. Coach. Penn State, a very good uh, running ball club with their freshman sensation, Dozier. You're going to try and force them to pass and take them out of what they do best. Well, you'd like to get any team in a predictable situation, so hopefully some second and third and longs. If, uh, if they can come out with a great first down, of course, you know, we're going to be behind. Good luck to you, Coach. Thank you very much. Okay. And to my right, the defending national champions, the Penn State Nittany Lions and their coach, Joe Paterno. Joe, after the ball club got off to an 0-3 start, what was the one or two things that turned it around? Well, we lost to a couple awfully good football teams in Nebraska and Iowa. We weren't that bad, really. I think once we stabilized the quarterback situation, we started to become a pretty good football team. And today you face a great passer in Steve Pallor. Yeah, we, we realize that, and uh, we have not exactly killed anybody who throws the ball well, but we hope we're going to play a little bit better today. Good luck to you, Joe. Okay, now back to Ray Scott on the booth. Okay, Joe Butita, we've heard from the coaches, we've seen the squads, and all that remains now is for me to tell you that we'll be back with a kickoff after this. <laughs> The Washington Huskies have won the toss. Let's identify the officials right now. Jack Gatto, the referee. Jim Crittenden, the umpire. The linesman, Charles Stewart. I'll let you sink in. <laughs> let it sink in. The weather here today is just beautiful. Mike Pereira is the line judge. Bill Jordan, the field judge. And Craig Battaglia is the back judge. Kicking off for Penn State will be their fine place kicker. Nick Gansitano, number 13. This game is played on artificial turf, and my colleague Joe Butita just set a world record in coming from the playing surface here at Aloha Stadium <laughs> to our broadcast position. Joe, you're a little bit out of breath, so just relax a second. Okay, on for that. I think the referee knew that you were going to be a few seconds arriving, so he held it up just a little bit. The deep man as Gansatano prepares to kick off. Number 15 for Washington. Lonzel Hill. To his right, number 25, Cookie Jackson, one of their talented tailbacks. So wherever you are, almost literally anywhere in the world, welcome to the second annual Aloha Bowl. Delighted you're with us. We're looking forward to a fine football game. Jackson juggles it out of bounds inside the five. So the Huskies will have to start from deep in Husky territory at the four-yard line. Now let's take a look at the starters. Steve Floor, of course, the All-Pac-10 quarterback, an excellent passer, 67%. All-Pac-10 second team, Hines. Fenny starting his first game at fullback. He's only a freshman. Dave Stransky, fine, fine receiver. Deep threat, Danny Green. Stransky is wide to the left. Starting fullback is Finney. Hines, with sprinter speed, has the ball. And just like that, a first down for the Huskies. 
as Scott Radisick drags him down. But keep in mind, Sterling Hines, the ball carrier, as we look at the rest of this starting offensive lineup for the Huskies. That's Tony Roten. He's a junior. Maher, the left tackle. Mallory, the left guard. And Mallory's all packed 10. Dan Ernisi is the center. Ted Brosey, the right guard. And big Lance Dotson, 280 pounds at right tackle. A first down on the first running play from the Washington 15. The Lures, fake, being rushed. This is a screen. This is Hines with the ball. Another first down, dragged down by Harry Hamilton, the all-everything hero back or strong safety of the Nittany Lions. And Pelour very lucky this time that number 34, the defensive right end, Bob White, didn't intercept this pass. Good pressure by 41 at Steve Sefter. But watch White. He almost caught it, and then it was up to Harry Hamilton to get the, the toenail of number 22, Hines, and bring him down. First and 10, Washington from the Husky 25. Tinney, the fullback, gets about four yards between four and five on first down. Rick Finney is a 6'3 freshman as we look at some of the Nittany Lion defenders. Greg Gattuso, 260 pounds. Bob White, number 34, almost picked that off. Steve Sefter, the other end on the left side. An outstanding array of linebackers led by Scott Radicic as you see him right there. For Washington, second down, a bit more than five from the Husky 30. This is Hines in motion. Penalty flag down. We may have illegal motion as the freshman Rick Finney starting in place of Walt Hunt, who will not play today. The junior fullback ordinarily starting at that position for the Huskies. Well, Ray, that's what I thought, too. In fact, we both were told that Hunt wouldn't play the regular fullback. Don James told me just before the ball game that Hunt is in uniform and may see some action. He has a hernia. He did it after the regular season during weight training. So we may not see him. We may. We'll have to wait and find out. Five-yard penalty will nullify a five-yard game. Maybe the weakest part of the line defense is their, their defensive back, except for Hamilton. They play soft. That's why they've been passed on this year. You heard Joe Paterno say they haven't been killers when the ball's been in the air. Sittner is at the one corner, and Lance Hamilton, the brother of Harry, is at the other corner. Second down, 11. Hines and Gattuso makes the big play behind the line. Number 70, the big senior defensive lineman out of Pittsburgh. 6'3 and 260 pounds. He simply beat his block that time and got into the backfield and had Hines almost as Hines got the football. Perhaps the one glaring defensive liability of the Nittany Lions has been their defense against the pass. That's right. They've been giving up an average of over 240 yards through the air every game. Third and 13 from the Washington 22. Just underway from Honolulu and no score. Stransky went in motion. The lure to run. And he's short of a first down at the 32-yard line. So it will be punt formation time for the Washington Huskies as the Nittany Lions secondary, at least in the opinion of Pelour, had receivers well covered. They certainly did that time. And Pelour, as we've seen him most of the Pac-10 season, Ray, has been a fine scrambler. Big, strong kid, good athlete, 6'4", 210 pounds, and he'll, he'll go high in the draft. So it is punt formation time for Thane Cleveland, who during the regular season averaged 38 yards per punt. And boy, do they have fellas who can return the football. At the Penn State 32-yard line, Kenny Jackson. He is not only one of the leading receivers in collegiate football, he, along with Kevin Bow, a very dangerous punt returner. So excellent position for Penn State's first offensive series. 36-yard punt by Cleveland, nine-yard return. And finally, the Nittany Lions get the football. With the score, Penn State nothing, Washington nothing. We'll be back after this. The broadcast cable cast rights to this game are granted by the Aloha Bowl Committee to Metro Communications Incorporated. Any rebroadcast or other use of this game without written consent is prohibited. The announcers on this telecast have been selected by Metro Communications Incorporated in consultation with the Aloha Bowl Committee. Penn State's first possession, Doug Strang at quarterback. 
John Williams and E.J. Dozier, the running backs, from the Penn State 44. And here goes Williams. For about eight yards on the first play. A little delay with John Williams, who would have been, I think, Joe, uh, almost certainly the tailback to succeed the great Kurt Warner, except that Dozier came along as a freshman. Dozier came along, got his shot when Williams got hurt, and now D.J. Dozier. Now you see the first freshman ever to gain 1,000 yards, ever to start at Penn State. Kenny Jackson, outstanding flanker. You'll see plenty of him. Kevin Bow can run with the best of them. Bow is their leading receiver. Gain of about eight yards. Second down, two. There's Dozier. And a first down for Penn State at the Washington 41-yard line. D.J. Dozier out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. Dean Dominio, good tight read, tight end. He's their deep threat act as a tight end, which is surprising. Heller Moles on the left side. The center, Nick Hayden, 250 pounds. Jeff Woofter, a junior. And their best offensive lineman, Stan Short, 6'4", 251, the right tackle. First and 10, Penn State at the Washington 41-yard line. No score. Strang looking. This is Dozier. And he picks up six yards as Strang elects to throw underneath the coverage, and it'll be second and four at the Washington 35. Now you talk about Washington defensively. There's Holmes, their best defender on the line. Liv Matson, the nose guard, Dean Browning at right tackle. They have very good linebackers as well. Strong linebacker, Stuart Hill. Fred Small, the outside left backer, Tim Meamber. The inside right backer, Joe Krakowski, who has the flu. An outstanding linebacker, may not play much today at all. Second and four, Washington 35 for Penn State. Williams. Oh, good defensive effort. After a gain of only about a yard by, among others, Stuart Hill, one of the linebackers. You're looking at the defensive backs, Vince Albratton, all Pac-10 second team, and Bob Leaphart, the weak side safety. They're just a good football team defensively. They've held opponents to 15 points a game this year while scoring 25 themselves. Third and two, Scott Garnett has checked in in place of a linebacker. He's a big defensive lineman for Washington. Dozier, and he has a first down at the 30 by about a yard in the grasp of Vince Albritton, the strong safety. All Britain is keeping an eye on Dozier and the fullback, and when he reads run, he comes up like crazy, as he did that time. When you're a strong safety, you're almost a linebacker. You're there to play the run primarily and then help out wherever you can, but play the run he did and stop Dozier after a short gain, but a first down. Skeeter Nichols, a running back, was in on that last running play as we look across the way at head coach Joe Paterno in his colorful garb. He has first and 10 Penn State at the Washington 30. There is no score. Those are his game pants, I heard. Dozier went in motion. Pass incomplete, straying a bit off target, so it will be second down and 10. Both of these teams not only had, obviously, big wins this season, to enable them to reach the Aloha Bowl, but they had major disappointments throughout the season, and all uh, the more credit to the coaching staff. Kevin Bow, number 11, comes left. Kenny Jackson, number 82, goes right. Second and 10, Penn State at the Washington 30. 9.32 to play first quarter, and no score. Strang, here's Williams. For defensive play by cornerback J.C. Pearson, the junior, out of Oceanside, California. That looked like a big gainer. Well, they like to get their running backs outside because both Dozier and Williams are very good in the open field. Now watch the top of your screen. You may see number four in the white show up. He's staying home, reading the play, beating number 69 around him to come up and make the stop on John Williams. Good quickness by Pearson to get in his way and really hold him for a very, very short gain, if any at all. Michael Collins comes in as a fifth defensive back on third and 10. Strang, flag down. Strang has a first down, but remember a penalty flag down near the line of scrimmage. Well, we were told about the poise of quarterback Doug Strang, or junior out of New Jersey, and he showed at that time, checked all of his receivers. When he found no one open, he ran the ball, and when he got past the first down sticks, 
He simply went down himself. But let's see what the foul is about. A personal foul against Washington. This will be very costly because Strang had picked up about 14 yards on the run. Now there will be added to that gain a penalty of half the distance to the goal line down to around the nine yard line. You know, Ray, that flag was thrown just after the ball was snapped. And I'm trying to figure out what in the world it was unless it was a, a head slap by one of the defensive linemen. This is our defense during the run. First down. Jack Gatto, the referee, explains it happened during the run. Now Washington will make three defensive changes as Penn State, as Don James looks long from along the near sidelines, Penn State has a first and goal, the first scoring threat of this game. First quarter, no score, 8.36 remaining in the period and the clock running. Jackson comes left and there is single coverage on him. Bow is to the right. Dozier is in a slot to the right. This is for Jackson. Very good coverage by Vesti Jackson, the sophomore cornerback of Washington from Fresno, California. It will be, and I think that was just thrown away. Although Kenny Jackson had him beat by about two steps, and Vesti had to stick that left arm in there to try and knock the ball away. Kenny Jackson has had a storied career at Penn State, number 82, the intended receiver in that play. He holds just about every Penn State passing record. This time, he lines up on the right side, and Kevin Bow is out to the left. Second and goal, Jackson in motion. Single coverage again, Ray. Dozier. Boy, was he straightened up at the line of scrimmage by number 46 linebacker Stuart Hill. It will be third and goal. As Doug Strang checks the sidelines for instructions from the coaching staff. We're just about the midway point of the first quarter. Washington took the opening kickoff, moved to a couple of first downs. Forced the punt, and now Penn State has held the ball since that time. Bow to the right, working against Pearson. Kenny Jackson to the left, working against Vesti Jackson. And I think Doug Strang sensed the blitz, Joe. He took a look at one of those defensive backs coming up right behind the line and elected to ask for a timeout. With the score, Penn State nothing, Washington nothing. We'll be back after this. Nick Gansitano, Penn State's fine place kicker, was limbering up his leg in anticipation of being called upon. Most of the Washington defensive unit was over talking with the Washington defensive coaches. Doug Strang is now back in the huddle. Penn State has a third and goal at the Washington seven-yard line. Kenny Jackson to the left, Kevin Bow to the right, Dozier in a slot right, John Williams a lone setback. Kevin Bow, the intended receiver, but covered beautifully, and a big rush put on Strang by Ron Holmes, who made a fine play. They had double coverage on Bow, who fell down in the corner. The pass thrown right on the sideline, so Bow had a chance to catch it, but he fell down. Place kicker, Nick Gonsitano, seven of 21 field goals. This will be a 24-yard attempt. State is on the board first in the second annual Aloha Bowl. Midway in the second quarter. The score, Penn State three, Washington nothing. We'll have more football from Hawaii after this. Who put three points on the board for Penn State will be kicking off to deep men Lonzel Hill and Cookie Jackson waiting off to our left at the goal line. Seven minutes and 27 seconds remain in the first quarter of this second annual Aloha Bowl. Jackson will run it out. Five, ten, and to the 20. The first time the Huskies had the football, they were able to move for several first downs, but then had to kick it away. So now we'll take a second look at this Steve Pelour led Washington Husky offense. Steve Pelour, number 16. Incidentally, the Kelly Springfield Tire Company will be sponsoring our most valuable player award today, a $1,000 check 
being awarded in the name of today's MVP to the university's general scholarship fund. Joe and I will be selecting that Kelly Springfield most valuable player. That was tight end Tony Root. I beg your pardon. Not Tony Roten. That was Danny Green, the wide receiver, winding up with a couple of yards. I want to emphasize again that there will be a Kelly Springfield most valuable player just prior to the end of today's game. Gain of three yards for the Huskies, second down and seven. Washington 23-yard line. Number 19, Patterson, was in motion. This is Hines to the 26 and a half yard line. It'll be third and short for Washington. I think what Penn State is trying to do, and it's obvious, they want to keep Ballore and the Huskies on the ground because he's an excellent passer. You saw that in the UCLA game when both Rick Neuheisel of UCLA and Ballore had fantastic days passing the football. And he's gone out, of course, to be the Pac-10 quarterback of the year. Danny Green wide to one side, Mark Patterson wide to the other, third and about three for a first down. Ballore still has it, and he's very close to a first down, despite a very good defensive play by Carmen Antonio, one of the Penn State linebackers out of Jeanette, Pennsylvania. Well, they say he got it. I thought he came down about a yard shy. Looks like Antonio got him a yard behind that stick. Antonio, by the way, is a first-year starter for Joe Paterno, who, of course, groomed linebackers like almost no other coach around. First and 10, Washington from their own 29-yard line. Penn State leading 3-0, 544 left to play, first quarter. From the I formation, here comes Sterling Hines, the blocker. And he's driven back by Scott Radisek, who made a very good hit, but not until Hines had picked up six yards. Now Penn State will make three defensive changes. Keep an eye on number 30 in the white uniform, Rick Finney. Starting his first game at fullback, he picked the right man to block, Harry Hamilton, tried to knock him out and did, and allowed Hines to cut inside. That doesn't sound like much, but here you get your first start in the bowl game, and Finney's doing a fine job in place of Walt Hunt. Second down and four. Two tight ends. Allure. Great pressure was almost intercepted. Great pressure from freshman uh, defensive lineman Tim Johnson out of Sarasota, Florida, number 55. He really got to Palour in a hurry. Well, the intended receiver was the tight end Tony Roten, number 88, who Palour finds triple covered. There's no way to throw it. This pass reminded me a lot of the pass he threw against UCLA in the final moments, final seconds, actually, that was intercepted by Don Rogers. Uh, that enabled UCLA to win the ball game. Third down, four and a half for a first down from the Washington 35. Addison in motion. This is Patterson, and it appears he has enough yardage for a first down at the 40. He knew just where he had to go. Mark Patterson, the Seattle junior. Number nine, Stransky now will check back in at a wide receiver spot. A lot of a lot of people wonder how the quarterback remembers all the plays. He's not checking his Timex right there. What he's <laughs> doing is looking at the plays he has written on his band. Penn State appears a bit confused now defensively. They were trying to wave their various players around. This is Cookie Jackson. The pass is ruled incomplete. The hit was made by Lance Hamilton the sophomore brother of hero back, as Penn State refers to their strong safety, Harry Hamilton. They told Cookie Jackson to run to the sideline and stop, but he ran over there and stepped on the darn thing and was out of bounds when he caught the football. That's why the play didn't count. Right foot was right on the line. So for Washington, trailing Penn State 3-0. 423 left to play first quarter. Second down, Penn Washington. Joe Paterno. He's here as the head coach. The Pelour decides he saw something he didn't like, and this will cost the Huskies, the Huskies a timeout. They had three men taking a look at Patterson, who was split wide to the left, so he almost was going to be triple covered. With a score, Penn State three and Washington nothing. We'll be back after this. 
second and ten Washington, their own 40-yard line. Cookie Jackson is the setback, and there goes Jackson. Oh, he can go. Picked up about eight yards. Great call. A little delay, a little draw play. Gain of about eight. It'll be third and two. The top three rushers for Washington were the three tailbacks, Sterling Hines, Cookie Jackson, and we haven't seen Jacques Robinson yet. We may not see him till later on, although James is going to use all of them, he said. Jackson missed the 82 season completely. He was Washington's top receiver in 81. That was the, the year in which Robinson really became a factor in the Rose Bowl. Third and two at the Washington 48. Patterson in motion. This is Jackson. And he has a first down at the Penn State 49-yard line. Number 55, Tim Johnson, one of a host of talented freshmen of this Penn State squad, was one of the men on the defensive play, along with Radisic. Now Danny Green, number 80, one of their top three receivers, will check into the lineup. This drive started following Penn State's successful field goal by Nick Gonsitano. That's been the only score. 325 left first quarter. 3-0 Penn State. This is Danny Green. The first Penn Stater to reach him missed the tackle. That was Shane Conlon, freshman out of Frewsburg, New York. But then his teammates quickly stepped in to hold the gain to two yards and second down eight. Number 45, cornerback Lance Hamilton really nailed Green that time. Penn State appeared to be looking for that play because it didn't have a chance of working. Danny Green out wide to the right. Second down, 8 Washington, Penn State 47. Ballure getting some pressure. Short gain. Tight end Tony Roten hit down immediately by Harry Hamilton. It will be third and short. So as of right now, it appears that Don James and staff have decided that the short possession type passing game is what is in order. They're going to take their time, be patient, not try and get it all in one fell swoop. That time, Pelora caught the Penn State defense in a switch. They're in the, in the method of switching a tackle and linebacker positions, and that's when they snap the football. Jock Robinson is in a slot to the left, his first appearance. <laughs> Straight ahead and apparently about a half yard shy of a first down at the Penn State 40. Leading the blocking at time, big number 70, the right tackle, Lance Dodson, the senior out of Napa, California. Fourth down and about one. Steve Pelour set a host of Husky records. They're going for the first down. Now Hines went onto the field, but now he's coming off. He would have been the 12th player. Big play. And Robinson, I don't think, made it. We can't credit any one player there. Did you spot anyone with your glasses there, Rich? Yeah, number 53 and number 41 in Penn State Blue. That's Don, Don Graham, the linebacker. And 41, Steve Scepter. They're on the bottom of that pile, and they just turned the Washington back around. So Penn State comes up with a big defensive play. With a 3-0 lead, the Nittany Lions have the ball, first and 10 at their own 40, with 1.27 to play in the first quarter, and Joe and staff have to be pretty happy about that. Big defensive play by a team that has been much maligned defensively this season. Well, a lot of folks call that pure football. You know, helmet to helmet, shoulder pad to shoulder pad, and the Nittany Lions won that battle. Kenny Jackson comes in motion. Sprang, play, action, fake. This is a big tight end out to the 48-yard line. That's Kirk Bowman, one of two tight ends. You know, I'm not even sure that Bowman or Bauman was the intended receiver. Kenny Jackson was right behind him about seven yards and was wide open. But Bauman reached up and caught the ball. He hasn't caught a lot. That's only his seventh reception of the year. He's pretty happy about it, and he should be. He's primarily a blocker when he's in there at tight end. Gain of seven. Second down three at the Penn State 47. We're down to the final minute of the first quarter from Honolulu. Dozier. Oh, nowhere to go. Three Huskies reached that freshman running sensation, led by Stuart Hill, who's made a couple of big plays already, one of the linebackers. Number 92, Scott Garnett was the man who turned him around. Watch 92. He'll come up right here and turn him around. 
Couple other white shirts nail him, and Garnett grabs him around the left ankle to be sure. So for Penn State, a loss of a yard, third down and four at the Penn State 46. The clock running, 15 seconds left in the first quarter. Wide receivers set out either side. Here comes a blitz. Garnett Number 92, again. Scott Garnett was the first to reach him. Then Browning got to him, and it'll be fourth down. As Penn State was not able to pick up the blitz, and the Huskies come up with a very big play on the final play of the first quarter. A lot of pressure put on center Nick Hayden that time. He had to pick up Garnett and then block the man coming from his right, Hayden's right. Well, Garnett got by him, and you see what happens. It's a matter of Penn State not holding the block long enough and Washington doing a super job getting to the quarterback. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Penn State 3, Washington nothing. We'll be back after this. This experience over here. Marvelous weather. George Reynolds, one of the fine punters in the country, averaging over 42 yards a punt during the regular season, kicking to Danny Green and Lonzel Hill with Green deep. And kicking into a cross. Oh, what a win. What, what a, what a kick. Oh, my goodness. Wow. He kicked. He kicked that about 62 yards in the air. That ties his season long, which was 62 coming in. There's been a lot of defense going on down there, but not much offense at all. Combined, passing and rushing, Washington has put 69 yards on the board in the first quarter. Penn State only 50. And that's what Joe Paterno has to say about Don James and his fellas. The sophisticated passing game, we haven't seen that yet so far. That may be a credit to Paterno's defenders. Patterson to the right, Stransky to the left. Ballure with one setback and two tight ends from the Washington 20. And this is Robinson, the freshman sensation who has not been able to play up to his spectacular first year. Gets an opportunity here and picks up about seven yards on first down. Jock Robinson, the San Jose California. All pack 10 and 82, thanks to a great Rose Bowl game. But he's had a weight problem of all things. Young fella just can't push himself far enough away from the table. Second down. Three. Robinson again. And he's wrestled down very emphatically by Carmen Maciantonio. Short of a first down, back to gain of only about a yard. It'll be third down and two at the Husky 28-yard line. We are just underway in the second quarter from the second annual Aloha Bowl in magnificent weather here at Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. Now both Patterson and Stransky are wide left on third and two. But, whoa, hit behind the line on a super play by Penn State's, well, there's a young man from Hawaii had a chance to play. Manoa. Tim Manoa. Tim Manoa. Joe Paterno characterized him as a young man, there he is, number 39, who is going to be, quote, a great football player. He's only a freshman from here in Honolulu. In fact, Manoa was the only Penn State player singled out last night at the banquet by Paterno. By the way, it's about 4 o'clock here in Honolulu, and time for the long shadows to creep in over the Aloha Stadium. Sunset to our left, it's beautiful. Cleveland to punt. Kevin Bow at the Penn State 31. He is a very dangerous returner. And he has it to the Washington 49-yard line. Wide receiver and kick returner, Kevin Bow with a 20-yard return after a 41-yard kick. There it is, Bow, very, very dangerous. He's also their leading wide receiver. Watch him go. Miss tackles there, miss tackles here. Look at him cut in and out. That's the beauty of a running back, or a, or a run back, I should say, like that, is it's so creative. He, even he doesn't know what he's gonna do until he starts down the field. The wide receivers of Penn State have been pretty well shut down by Washington so far. Jackson to the left and Bow to the right. A fake. This is for Jackson. Kenny Jackson had his man beat, but the pass just a bit too long. He was able to get a step on Vesty Jackson. 
But Strang really aired that one out, Joe. That was almost quite a dance team of Jackson and Jackson at about the 10-yard line. And Vesty Jackson of Washington, while he tried to break up the pass, was trying not to interfere with Kenny Jackson. But look how far Kenny had to beat. And Strang threw that ball from where he dropped back a good 65 yards in the air. There's a little delay. Flag down. And a big game by Skeeter Nichols, but a flag is down as Nichols runs for almost, almost the first down. Let's see what the officials come up with here. Flag right at the line of scrimmage. It's a motion penalty against the Nittany Lions. So the near 10-yard run will be nullified. Incidentally, we had a new ride receiver in that time, Tim Robinson, a senior from Sicklerville, New Jersey, replaced Kenny Jackson right after he ran that long pattern, but now Jackson is back in. There's Skeeter Nichols. I tell you what, Joe Paterno, with the weather and all being... Little shift, of... offense, second down. Paterno is solely responsible for the substitutions in the ball game. He lets his assistants run the game pretty much with his okay, of course, but he substitutes when he sees the player getting tired. Second down, 15 from the Penn State 46. This is a big tight end, Demidio, out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Dean Demidio out of Westchester, Pennsylvania. He's 6'3 and 216 pounds, just a sophomore. And Penn State in the last year or so has been emphasizing the passing game more than they have before. Eight-yard gain here to Demidio, his 20th catch of 1983. But last year was the first time Penn State ever gained more yards passing than rushing. Third down and seven, 46-yard line of Washington. Penn State leading 3-0, flag down. That pass, that pass was intended for DePasqua. But remember, we have another penalty flag down. Interesting on the sideline, Ray, Steve yep. Pallor, the Washington quarterback, has his elbow wrapped in ice, and they're warming up the backup quarterback right now. Illegal shift. That would be Paul well, Sakuro. Well, what a major loss. First down. Now that's the second illegal shift in this series against Penn State. Pass was incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Could you detect the infraction there? I really couldn't. I'm looking here. It looked like 75 may be holding. He has his arms extended right there. But the referee, Jack Gatto, definitely labeled it an illegal shift. At any rate, it is punt formation time for George Reynolds. His last punt was 62 yards in the air. And Danny Green stands back at the Washington 10. 12-15 to play first half. Penn State leading on a Gansatano field goal, but we had a whistle just before the snap. A Nick Gonsatano field goal is the only score in this game as Penn State leads by the margin of a field goal. So Penn State now has been misfiring and uh, self-destructing in the course of this particular series of downs. This penalty may not be all that bad. Might have been deliberate. Might have been deliberate so we can drop it in inside the 10-yard line rather than kick it into the end zone. Reynolds has kicked out of bounds inside the 10 on five occasions, inside the 20 on 11 occasions. Danny Green. And a flag is thrown. Now, I don't know whether we saw a fair catch signal or not. I did not, and I think it's going to be on Penn State. You must give the receiver a buffer zone of at least two yards and allow him to catch the ball. And I think it's going to be on the Nittany Lions if I read that correctly. Yep. If so, it would be about three mistakes. There it is. Well, watch this now. In the old days, before this year, that's how old this rule is, just a year old, a fella could time his arrival with the ball and really nail the receiver. That's not really fair to the guy trying to catch the football. So they put that rule in there, and it was violated by the Penn State Nittany Lions. Team with the opportunity to catch less than two yards from the receiver. First down. You're dead right, Joe. So a 15-yard penalty. 
Mike. And Washington will start from the Washington 32 yard line with 12.05 left to play in the first half. The score is Penn State 3, Washington nothing. We'll have more in the 1983 Aloha Bowl after this. For the Washington Huskies, Steve Pelour will have Sterling Hines, number 22, Rick Finney, number 30, as his running backs, Leroy Lutu from Honolulu, a senior tight end, number 81. The wide receivers will be Danny Green, 80, and Dave Stransky, 9. First and 10, Washington from the Huskies, 32. Woo! Danny Green. Oh, he put a beautiful move on Lance Hamilton to get first down yardage out to the 46-yard line. Not only was it a great move, he was still trying to corral the football. He was bobbling the ball on the sideline. Watch it here. And also keep in mind that Pelour just took that ice pack off his right elbow. Now watch Danny catches the ball. Doesn't know where his defender is. He's bobbling the ball. Still has time to make a move. That's a remarkable athlete. Meanwhile, up the middle for about five yards came Hines in the grasp of Radisic and Nashi Antonio. Hasn't been much of a ground game so far, Ray. Dozier, the freshman sensation with over 1,000 yards for the Lions, had only eight yards on four carries in the first quarter. Hines had only 17. Second down, four and a half. Pelour off target for Hines. He was under some pressure as Harry Hamilton was blitzing from his what Penn State refers to as the hero position. So now Washington is in a third down four and a half. Penn Mike, State, Mike uh, Suter checks in in place of Harry Hamilton now. Penn State's had a tough time against the pass this year allowing almost 250 yards in the air per game and they're trying to put the pressure on Pelour so he can't throw. Third four and a half. Then he went in motion. play by number 27 Chris Sidner and as a result Washington is short of a first down it was practically no gain on the play Danny Green made the grab but Sidner made a big play and Danny Green made the play offensively for the Huskies knowing his quarterback was in trouble Pelour has nowhere to throw Danny has already completed his route now he comes back for the football see him cut across and come back he saves Pelour's neck right there unfortunately for the Huskies no gain so it's punt formation time Neither team able to do much of anything except for that one Penn State drive that wound up in a field goal. Woo! Cleland's punt. Boy, we've had some fine, <laughs> fine punting. My goodness, a 48-yarder that time. It comes with 10.34 left to play in the first half. We now pause for station identification on the Aloha Bowl television network. This is WPHL-TV, Channel 17, That's Philadelphia. For those of us who expected a high-scoring game, maybe it is yet to come. Well, there's been no offense. Both teams have been primed defensively so far. Doug Strang, the quarterback. John Williams, the fullback. D.J. Dozier is the tailback. Whoop! Down goes Strang. That's the all pac 10 Defensive tackle, Ron Holmes, number 90, who beats his man. Look at him just throw around the nose guards like he was nothing. Actually, Nick Hayden, I should say, the center, and put Strang down. A loss on the play of eight yards. Second down and 18. Back at the Penn State 12-yard line. Kevin Bow goes left. Kenny Jackson goes right. Jackson in motion. has nowhere to go. All right, we saw the fellow who made the tackle, but number 92 made the play. Scott Garnett, the defensive left end, got in the backfield. He's been in the backfield most of the afternoon and forced Dozier to make a cut. Watch number 92 in the white show up. Right about there, knocked his man down, and Dozier had a cut to his left, slow up, and then was tackled. Fred Small wound up with the tackle. There was a loss of another yard, and now it's third and 19 at the Penn State 11. There are two all Pac-10 defenders on that line for Washington. That's why they're so tough. Kevin Bow could not hold on. He 
he would have been short of a first down. Pass incomplete, and it's punt formation time. And right now, uh, barring a sensational punt by Penn State's George Reynolds, Washington should have very good field position with 9.07 to play in the first half, and Penn State leading three to nothing. Danny Green and Lenzel Hill are back to accept this punt as Reynolds will be standing in the end zone. Paterno a little bit upset. This is the, the view that George Reynolds has right now. Yeah, I know, I recognize him. Good punt. Danny Green at the Washington 44. Look out! running out. It's the time of year when a lot of things... Well, there's one person that uh, doesn't exactly have too much sympathy <laughs> for... <laughs> it's 88 degrees. Can you believe? Boy, I might perspire. It's so hot up here, I can't believe it. <laughs> Only kidding, folks. Back home, it's the way it goes. Jager will kick off for the Huskies, who just like that have grabbed the lead with that much time left to play in the first half. You know, there were a couple of key blocks in that run back, but not a lot of blocks. Danny Green just kind of outran the defense. Deep to receive the two Penn State starting running backs, John Williams and D.J. Dozier. Good kick. Dozier will not run it out. So the Penn State Nittany Lions, except for one drive, have been almost totally controlled by number one, the Husky defense, and number two, by Penn State mistakes, which have resulted in penalties. And Don James, the highly successful Husky coach, looks on from the near sideline. Well, the Huskies are jacked up now. There are a lot of knocking and rocking going on on that kickoff right there. So Penn State will start from the Penn State 20. And there's that defensive note that we alluded to earlier. They allowed seven points or less in five games this year. Two of their defensive linemen, Holmes and Madsen, the left tackle and nose guard, are all Pac-10 performers. Demidio, the tight end, is on the right side. Here comes Dozier. Slowed up by Holmes. And almost stripped the ball away from Dozier. I don't know what we have on a replay. If you can, watch number 68, Madsen, the nose guard, right in the middle of your screen. He's blocked and blocked. They hold the block. He fights it off and comes up and makes the tackle. He helps on the tackle. There's 68 showing up. That's why he's an all-conference performer. That's why Dozier can't run this afternoon. Washington has him picked out, and they're doing a the job. A gain of one, second down nine, Penn State 21. For Jackson one hung up in the air long enough for Vesti Jackson, the defensive back, to almost pick it off. All right, earlier, Kenny Jackson had Vesti Jackson beat by about two yards inside the five. The pass was overthrown. They decided, what the heck, it's time to go that way again. Vesti Jackson of Washington was equal to the task. He stayed right with the fella. Todd Moles, a sophomore offensive guard from wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania, injured on the play, requiring attention with 8.07 to play in the first half. And Washington leading on a brilliant, sparkling 56-yard punt return by Danny Green for a touchdown. Now, 
Now Kenny Jackson who ran that deep pass route will be replaced now by Tim Robinson. Nope. Kenny Jackson's going to stay in. Quite a record under Coach Joe Paterno. He has taken in the bowl game 16 of 18 of the years since he has been the head coach. That's a little bit more serious than we first expected. Moles is just now being helped up to a sitting position. These are some of the gals from Tyler, Texas, the high school down there who have come along to help us celebrate this Aloha Bowl. Born in Brooklyn, Joe Paterno, graduate of Brown University in 1950. So Todd Moles is being aided from the field. He'll be replaced by a freshman, Mark Sickler, 6'3", 235-pounder out of the little town of Falls, Pennsylvania. There you see what Don James had to say about his colleague Joe Paterno. They had some fun with each other last night at the banquet, kidding each other. Penn State offense, very much stymied by this tough Husky defense, is third and nine at the Penn State 21-yard line. Incomplete. Intended for Bow, but Strang under great pressure. And the Washington Huskies have very definitely been in control of this game with the exception of the one drive that resulted in Penn State's field goal. Now George Reynolds will again be punting to Danny Green and Lonzel Hill. And Ray, the, the thing I think you notice now if you're a coach on the field is how much more emotional Washington is than is Penn State. I know they're leading, but you got to maintain that certain level of emotion to play this game, and Washington has that edge right now. Mike Stillman to snap the ball back to George Reynolds. Too much height, and the whistle blew just before the ball was snapped. Flag is down at the Penn State 45-yard line. Now, that was in literally no man's territory where the infraction was, where the official was who made the... Uh, Notice what happened, and here we have the explanation. Goodbye. Play again. Offense. Fourth down. Uh, we... We've had two delay of games, and I'm not sure right now there would be no advantage to no. taking a five-yard penalty as there was earlier. It's, they're just not as polished right now as Washington for some reason, and that may be attributed to the coaching or to the kids. I mean, they've been over here on a vacation for a week. Now they say, okay, now you got to go play game. He really got his leg into this one. Danny Green at the Washington 34. There he goes again. But there's going to be clipping yeah, on this play. A lot of clipping. A Penn State player is down at the Washington 44. He was one of the players clipped. But there were several clips along the way. As soon as Green made his first cut, there was a clip at the 35-yard line. And a Penn State player down at the Washington 44. And look at Green. Green is being helped by Jackson. Green himself is down. There was an awful lot of contact on that punt return. And we have another... We have the Washington player, Danny Green, down on the far side of the field, a Penn State player down. I right, take a look now on the clip coming up to the left of your screen, right there on number 38. See, man had his helmet behind on the block. Can't do that. You got to keep your head in front of the man when you're blocking him. Doing the run back. And then downfield, there were two other infractions, and then Green got hurt at the 40-yard line. And there he is. So the the yardage lost on a penalty will be really unimportant as compared to a possible loss to Danny Green with the score. Washington 7, Penn State 3. We'll be back after this. List of the first of the games coming up by way of that Big Ten schedule. Now, the lure, big hole, and hit downs quickly with Sterling Hines, the tailback. Looked like there was a hole there, but it closed in a hurry. Steve Sefter, among others, making the defensive play. Gain, two yards. Second down, eight from the Washington 24. We're midway in the second quarter. The Huskies are leading Penn State 7-3 on the strength of a Danny Green 56-yard return of a punt for a touchdown. 
Stransky is to the right and Patterson to the left. Danny Green, injured on his last punt return, has not returned to the game. Fuller still has the ball. And it went through the hands of his fullback, Rick Finney, and it will be third and long. Floor now six of eight, but for only 35 yards, Ray. So he is, as you pointed out before, correctly, they're going for the short yardages. They're trying to march down the field, take some time off the clock, and score later on instead of the bombs. We've seen Penn State, ironically enough, go for the long bombs and nearly make one. Third down, eight. Fleur, three-man rush. Very close to a first down just across the 31-yard line. Gattuso was in on the hit. Max Antonio was in on the hit. Hines was the receiver. He signals first down, and the officials agree. So a very big first down with 6.55 to play in the first half for Washington. Hines really makes this play after he catches the ball. Look at him converge on him, puts his shoulder down, gets banged around like a ping-pong ball, but falls the right way, falls upfield, not toward the sideline. That got him the first down if they got it. Hip on the nose of the football. So his ability to fall upfield is what got him the first down. At the 32-yard line of Washington, first and 10 Husky. Penn State has been able to move the ball on just one occasion, and they wound up with a field goal. Since that time, Washington's defense has been tremendous. Hines, 22, the tailback. Finney, number 30, the fullback. Fleur on first down. A little bit too short for Patterson to get to it. I'm wondering if perhaps the wind is doing something that we're not aware of from up here, Joe. As a, well, so many passes seem to be nosing into that artificial turf. I know it seems Randy. that way, but when I was down on the field for the pregame, the wind up top was really circling and blowing very hard. On the field, hardly any wind at all. Right? Second down and 10, the Husky 32. Hines is grabbed by the ankle in that little sprint draw. Number 84 again, Mash Antonio is getting a lot of calls and he was helped out by Gattuso on that play and now Washington is, as a moment ago, in a third and eight. This time from the Husky 34. And Shane Conlon checks into the defense, number 31. You know, a, you know, a name we haven't called a whole lot today is the linebacker, Scott Radisic. Slot formation right. Penny in motion. And we have a flag. That was Joe Hines, who was... I think we may have a delay of game penalty this time against Washington. We've already had two against Penn State. No, illegal procedure. I think that covers about as many football sins as any other That's infraction. Right. There's Pilar today, 7 of 10, 43 yards. You saw a change in the process. No touchdowns. Has not been intercepted. That's a key fact. He went 137 passes this year without being intercepted, and he was only picked off eight times all season. So now Steve Fleur is facing a third and 13 from the Washington 29 with 540 left to play in the first half. 7-3 Washington. Almost, almost picked off is incomplete. Shane Conlon almost had an interception. And he almost had an interception because Pelor was hit in the process of throwing. How ironic. We talk about how few times he was intercepted and he almost gets picked off right there on worldwide television. And now with 534 left to play in the half, it would appear that Penn State will have great field position. Remember what happened last time you said that? Yes, I do. They ran it back for a score. Kenny Jackson and Kevin Bow, two outstanding punt returners awaiting the punt from Thane Cleland. Jackson is 82, Bow is number eight. Whoa, almost got away. They want to keep it away from Bow, but they kick it right to him. He's their most dangerous returner. Bow runs a lot of yardage and gets absolutely nowhere. There was just excellent coverage on a 43-yard punt and essentially no return. So Penn State will start from the Penn State 28-yard line. 
What a save by Cleveland on that snap. Boy, yeah. that could have been disastrous, as you know. Well, let's see if the Penn State offense can get on track now. There's Cleveland, who got away that fine punt. Here's an interesting graphic now. On the left is what Penn State does offensively as to what Washington does defensively on the right. Yeah. Look what Washington, 122 yards rushing. They've kept opponents, too, and Penn State likes to run the ball. Dozier's really been shut down today. Here comes Williams. He actually tripped over Kevin Bow after getting eight yards. His teammate on the turf. So a gain to the Penn State 36 yard line of eight yards. There it is, a little delay in the backfield. That gives the running back a chance to find out where he'd like to go. And John Williams does some creative things when he gets in the field. Ankle tackle brought him down. And number four there just to make sure J.C. Pearson. Second down and two at the Penn State 36. Here comes Williams again. And Penn State has not been able to block Ron Holmes, but very, very infrequently today. Big number 90. Well, on the, on the left side of the defensive line for the Huskies, 92, Scott Garnett, who's had a wonderful game. And number 90, the All-Pac-10 performer, Ron Holmes. Now, just to the right of them is the nose guard, Lynn Matson, who was also an all-conference performer. You're talking about some big, talented people up front for Don James. Third and three and a half for Penn State at the Nittany Lion, 35. Washington leading 7-3, late in the first half. Williams. He does not get a first down. He gets about a yard. And this Washington defense today, I just can't say enough about it. They've been, their reaction to the ball has been just tremendous. It certainly has. Here's Strang's view, the quarterback. He looks downfield. He's going to have to go up top and throw over the defensive lineman. That one again was Madsen coming in to put pressure on him. See what I mean? They have three defensive linemen today who have just dominated the ball game for the Huskies. So it's George Reynolds time again. Now with the injury, Danny Green has not been able to return. The deep man for Washington is Michael Collins. Oh, what a punch. Collins is inside the 15. He's back at the 9. And a five Suter, one of the hero backs, Mike Suter, made the play. 53-yard punt, three-yard return. The score is 7-3 Washington over Penn State, and we'll be back after this. Joe and I will be selecting that Kelly Springfield, most valuable player, just before the end of the game. Way back at the Washington 12-yard line, Palour and company go to work. Here is Cookie Jackson. Out across the 20-yard line, so good yardage on first down. All right, we talked about the all-Pac-10 performers on defense for Washington. This time, left guard Rick Mallory, number 55, again all-conference this year, led the charge around the right side and blocked two people, allowing Cookie Jackson to pick up nine yards. Second and one. And the first down is picked up out to the 25-yard line. That's another fullback in there, too, number 35, Bowie Maono. Out of South San Francisco, number 35. <laughs> We're down now to where just two minutes and 36 seconds remain as Don James looks over to the scoreboard clock, as we are doing right now. His Huskies are leading Penn State 7-3. to three. Danny Green is up on the sideline, but limping without his helmet on. He may not play the rest of the first half. Jackson has nowhere to go. Conlon made the play. Bob White helped out. Bob White, number 34, the defensive end, is only a freshman from Freeport, Pennsylvania. It's actually a loss of a yard. It's second down, 11. Allure. This is Jackson. Boy, did he make a beautiful move. He put a move on Scott Radisek. 
That left Scott Radisick grabbing the air. Watch this. Everybody yelling pass at this time. You might have heard him. Watch the move on Radisick, who's an All-American linebacker out of Pittsburgh. So well, now a hurry-up offense. A minute and a half left to play. First half. Floor being chased and the pass complete. And a good hit by Chris Sidner on the big tight end, Tony Roten. I'm watching the clock. They ruled he did not get out of bounds, so the clock is running, and Washington now takes its second time out here of the half with one minute and 13 seconds remaining in the half, and the Washington Huskies, who have definitely taken over control of this game at the line of scrimmage, and it appears, as you mentioned earlier, Joe, very definitely, emotionally, appear to be much higher than Penn State at the moment. Right now they are, and if defense wins ball games, and most coaches feel feel that it does, I think if we had a vote for the player of the game right now, it's got to be a defender. Definitely so. And I'll tell you, I've been watching that number 90 for Washington, and I don't think Penn State has really blocked him effectively that I've noticed, certainly, in the first half. He has either been in on the play or has contributed to the play. And Joe Paterno and his staff will certainly have a, a lot of things to do at halftime. I'd like to put that most valuable player trophy at the 50-yard line, put Holmes at the 45, and put Garnett at the other 45, and let them go at it. They both really contributed to this fine defensive effort for Washington, but we have a whole other half to go, so it's certainly not over yet. Halftime show. We'll have some uh, most interesting interviews for you. And, uh, of course, the Aloha Bowl Committee has some special events planned as well. Washington second and ten. Husky 41-yard line. One minute, 13 seconds left in the first half. Second annual Aloha Bowl finds Washington leading Penn State 7-3. to three. Patterson in motion. Finally ridden down by Mike Zordich, the free safety. But Washington at the Penn State 21-yard line on a 38-yard gain. Pelour to Patterson, one minute and one second left in the half. And all that with Penn State playing the pass. Patterson made a great move to the inside, almost broken for the score. Penn State knew it was coming. And that was a stop the clock, throw it away with 54 seconds now left in the half. That's why Pelor had so much time on that previous play. They were playing the pass. They dropped eight people. Here it is. Now watch him roll. There's, there's nobody rushing. There's three people trying to get to him. Everybody else dropping. Patterson moves inside. Harry Hamilton, who is their best defensive back, and almost breaks it for the score. Look at 51 rush down there. Dan Ernici, the center. You talk about a team effort to the Washington Huskies. They're really getting it right now. Second and 10 at the Penn State 22-yard line. Nobody there. It will be third and 10. And now for Penn State, a new defender will check in. Linebacker Roger Alexander, a sophomore from Riverdale, Maryland, will come in. He'll replace Shane Conlon. And now a third and 10 Washington at the Penn State 22, 47 seconds left in the half. Look at Danny Green on the sideline trying to run, trying to loosen up the knee or the ankle he hurt. We don't know which one, and he can't do it. He's still limping pretty badly. Third and 10. <laughs> Big hit by Sidner on the intended receiver, number 19, Mark Patterson, who made the big play earlier. So now it is field goal time. Jeff Jager has been successful for Washington on 20 of 26 field goal attempts. This will be about a 40-yarder, perhaps a 39-yarder. Steve Pelour, we must keep in mind, the quarterback is the holder. It will be a 39-yard attempt with 41 seconds left in the half. The distance. Good. The Huskies dominating the game have stretched their lead to where the scoreboard at Aloha Stadium reads Washington 10, Penn State 3, 36 seconds left in the half. A 
anxious to see what adjustments Penn State will make offensively in the second half. I they're think two, they're two great wide receivers. Bow and Jackson have been just shut down. I think Paterno's got to take those pants off. <laughs> they're really bad luck for him. <laughs> yeah, they really have. They've shut down the passing game. And uh, surprisingly, you know, Penn State, when, when I think of Penn State, I think of a running game. I think of a linebacker-oriented defense. Well, they're not getting either today. We expect to see and will see Dozier and Williams. They're two starters at the running back spots deep on this upcoming kickoff return. But the last time Jager kicked off, it was deep enough in the end zone that there was no return. Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. That's a town that gave... Uh, Mike Ditka to the Pitt Panthers and later the Chicago Bears. Jeff Jager to kick off. This one might be returnable. Dozier at the goal line. All the way to the 43-yard line with 28 seconds left in the half. He almost broke it. And it was the kicker, Jeff Jager, who brought him down with an ankle tackle. They say once Dozier gets through the line of scrimmage, you can almost kiss him goodbye. Well, here he breaks through the first couple of waves of Huskies, but it was Jager hanging back in the safety position who comes up to make the stop right about here with a hand on the ankle. So Penn State with 28 seconds left in the half has a first and 10 at the Penn State 41-yard line. Now Kenny Jackson goes left and Kevin Bow comes right. Dozier in a slot right. This is Williams. He gets about four yards. Now Penn State still has at least one, maybe two timeouts left. They're going to line up quickly. The clock shows 13 seconds left in the half. They'll go without a huddle. Nope, they're going to take a timeout because Strang is going over to the sidelines to talk with the coaching staff. You want to hear a remarkable statistic as we close in right now? Dozier has seven yards today and six carries. Amazing. Seven yards. That scoring drive, which resulted in the field goal by Jager, took just two minutes and 37 seconds, mainly because of that 38-yard pass play from Pelour to Patterson. And did he put a move on Harry Hamilton? Boy, he Woo! certainly did. He certainly did. What a pretty picture we had there a moment ago, that wide shot of the stadium. I think our staff and technicians ought to be congratulated. They're doing a marvelous job. Look at that shot. My, oh, my. This is a baseball stadium as well. And right now, the Penn State offense is in short center field, if I line it up correctly. They just moved these stands out of the way, and the Hawaii, Hawaii Islanders play here. That pass play, a little flip pass from Strang to Williams, picked up just three yards. Second and seven, Penn State 45-yard line, 13 seconds left in the first half. Double coverage on Kenny Jackson and on Kevin Bow. Both wide receivers will draw double coverage. the left hand of Kevin Bow with now eight seconds left in the half. He was certainly wide open. I think that pass has to be caught, Ray. I really do. I mean, it's easy for me to say, but wide open. Uh, and if you're a Kevin Bow, if you have those kind of credentials, he is their number one receiver. You got to catch that ball. You just have to catch it, period. It is now third and seven. Eight seconds left in the half. Washington 10, Penn State 3. Again, the wide receivers draw all sorts of attention. This is Dozier for a first down at the 43-yard line, but the clock tells us we have reached the end of the first half. The score, Washington Huskies 10, Penn State's Nittany Lions 3. We'll be back after this. Washington dominated the first half. Not too many yards passing. But look at the yards rushing for Penn State with their outstanding freshman, D.J. Dozier. He only got seven yards in the first half. Their entire team got 24. 
So Washington right now dictating the tenor of the ball game. They are in command physically and emotionally, and I'm just dying to find out what Paterno told them at halftime, and we'll see if it turns them around. We'll have the second half kickoff right after these messages. He told me that, as I say, several years ago, that in his opinion, Penn State staff did the best job of adjusting at halftime of any college team he had seen that year. So it remains to be seen as we look at what the receivers did in the first half. Well, the receivers have done more than the rushers. As you say, defense has dominated the ball game. Defense wins ball games. And on the basis of that alone, if we want to project the next hour or so, you could say Washington is well on its way to its second Aloha Bowl championship. But... They've got to get by Penn State. Maybe the Nittany Lions are indeed fired up. We'll see. They were not so fired up in the first half. At least Washington kept them at bay, and I think that's a real critical point. The most electrifying play by Penn State in the first half came in the closing seconds when after the Washington field goal, which put the Huskies ahead 10 to 3, Dozier almost broke a kickoff. Yes, he did. And he's back there now, number 42, along with Williams, number 44 as Jager prepares to kick off. This will be John Williams at the goal line. So Williams loses his footing as he was about to be submerged by about four Huskies, and Penn State must start from the Penn State nine-yard line. Tried to make a cut there and simply slipped and fell. Now, that would have made more sense in the last two days when we had some pretty heavy rains over here, but the field is in excellent condition. So first and 10, Penn State trailing Washington, 10-3. Penn State has won four straight bowl games. Strang, the quarterback, Williams, the fullback, Dozier, the tailback. Williams gets about three yards. It will be second down, seven. Among others, Holmes again, number 90. Number 42, Tim Meamber. There's an interesting statistic. The Huskies have held opponents to 15 points a game. Wow. Second down seven from the Penn State 12. Here's Dozier. Gets to the 15 for three very tough yards, and Penn State will be faced with a third and five, and that was Joe Krakowski who met Dozier at the pass. Now, Krakowski woke up this morning with a pretty good case of the flu, according to his coach, Don James, and he was really having trouble in the locker room with his stomach. But uh, how do you keep a kid out of a bowl game, especially here in Hawaii? Krakowski's in there. He's one of their top tacklers this year. Nick Hayden comes over the ball. Penn State third and five from the Lion 15. Fake to Dozier. Is a tight end, Demidio, for a first down at the Penn State 25-yard line, where he is brought down by Vince Albritton. At the 26-yard line, the pass is complete. Well, Demidio caught one pass in the first half. I believe that was for a first down. And now he catches another one, this time a little out to the flat. Good patience, good poise by Strang. And he's wide open for the catch. 11 yards and a first down. At the Penn State 26-yard line. Second half just underway. Washington leading 10-3. Dozier. And he fights for pretty good yardage this time. From the 26 to the 33 for seven yards. I think that's his longest gain of the game. Let's pause now for station identification on the Aloha Bowl television network. WPHL-TV, Channel 17, Philadelphia. Penn State second and three after Dozier's seven-yard pickup at the Penn State 33. Williams to the 34. It will be third and two. Number 68, Lynn Madsen. The middle guard from Vista, California, and Fred Small, the junior linebacker from Los Angeles. One of the premier battles on the field is the Penn State center, Nick Hayden, number 58, against the nose guard, Lynn Madsen, number 68. Madsen has had a pretty easy time with them all day. Right now, Scott Garnett, number 92, checks in defensively. 
third, a yard and a half away from a first down, just beyond the Penn State 34. Pass complete to Kevin Bow. First down, Penn State 44 yard line. Now, Kenny Jackson checks in. He was out for a play in favor of Tim Robinson. Here's a tight end, Dean Demidio. He was wide open down the field. Of course, the play was designed to go to the right flat, and Strang was looking right all the while. Never saw Demidio downfield. Back-to-back -back first downs by Penn State. Kenny Jackson is the man on the move. Holding his ground was Lynn Madsen. It's almost as if Madsen is playing a one-on-one -on -one contest against Dozier. Well, I'm sure as the nose guard, he's given the responsibility of keeping an eye on the tailback. He'll let the linebackers worry about the fullback escaping out to the flat. But he's got to fight the war in the battle, of course, and the battle in the pitch is being won right now by Holmes, Matson, and Garnett of Washington. They're just dominating that line. No gain, second down 10, Penn State 44. some pressure unable to deliver the ball to Kevin Bow. pressure by Dean Browning it will be third and ten well what a play by Browning he jumped up after being blocked to the ground he jumped up and got in the way of Strang of course Dean Browning the brother of the Raiders Dave Browning Kenny Jackson checks into the huddle he'll be a wide receiver along with Tim Robinson as Kevin Bow goes to the sidelines a third and ten for Penn State at the Penn State 44, second half just underway. 10-3, Washington leading. Right through the hands of Kenny Jackson and an interception by Tim Meamber. Not exactly the immaculate reception, but very close to it. It came off the helmet of a Washington player and was picked up by Tim Meamber, the linebacker. You'll have to take a look at this and see for yourself what happened, but very good time by Strang, looking for Kenny Jackson all the way. Now watch the play right here. Right through his hands, off the head of number six, All Britain, and into the hands of Meamber. Meanwhile, we're back live, and here's Pelour throwing on the run, and the pass is complete to his big tight end, Tony Roten. So Washington with a big turnover and immediately to the air and a first down at the Penn State 43-yard line. I can't remember when I saw Kenny Jackson not catch a pass that was thrown right in his hand. It looked like the pass almost surprised him. It was there that quickly. I don't know what else to believe right now. First and 10, Washington. Hines in motion. Finney squeezes for about four yards, and it will be second down and six at the Penn State 39. Gattuso helped on the stop, along with Mash Antonio. Steve Pelour, during the regular season, completed better than 67% of his passes. He sends Stransky and Patterson out to the left. Second and six. Hines and a fine play by number 31, Shane Conlon. There was no gain. It will be third and six. Conlon is one of Paterno's redshirt freshmen. He has a number of freshmen, but they're redshirt freshmen. There's a big difference. These fellows were held out of competition last year. They have freshman eligibility. But it, in, a, in essence, they're sophomores. They've been around the college scene for all, a year now, over a year. A big third and six for Washington. Incomplete. It was juggled and not held by Patterson, and it's fourth down. And that appeared to be a catchable ball. Yeah, it was thrown a little bit behind Patterson, but when you're as good as Patterson, people expect you to catch passes you really shouldn't catch. Thane Cleveland will try to pin Penn State deep now. Now, the Nittany Lions, this is the first time today, Joe, they have not had two men back. So perhaps they're going to try and put the rush on Cleveland. 
Now there's 10 men up on the line. We'll see if they drop any back. Kevin Bow back at the Penn State 10. 9.36 to play third quarter. Washington leading 10 to 3. Yeah, they dropped four people back. They're going to try and return it. Uh-oh. Into the end zone. So Penn State will start from the 20. On Penn State's last possession, a rather unusual interception in that it went through a receiver's hands off the helmet of a defender and then intercepted by Washington. But they must turn it over by way of a punt. The score, Washington 10, Penn State 3, will have more of the 1983 Aloha Bowl live from Honolulu at Mines. His Huskies defense has been magnificent. Penn State thwarted in the first half by that Husky defense, by some Penn State mistakes. And here in the second half by a turnover. It is first and 10, Penn State at the Penn State 20. Dozier, three yards. Brought down by, among others, Dean Browning, the defensive end. Dozier gets a hard-fought three. It'll be second down seven. Once Dozier gets through the line of scrimmage, he's very dangerous. The thing is, today, he hasn't gotten through the line of scrimmage. They've stopped him at or around, and look what he has. Only 20 yards and 10 carries. Now, on second and seven, Jimmy Rogers, a fifth defensive back, checks in for Washington. Second and seven. Demidio has it for a first down just beyond the 30. I would have to believe that with the continuous doubling of the wide receivers, that Demidio would have to be consistently drawing one-on-one -on -one coverage. That's true, and you also saw Dozier that time sneak out of the backfield to the left. He was also open in the left flat, but the play was designed to go to Demidio, who caught his third pass for three first downs now. Kenny Jackson goes out to the left. He draws Vesti Jackson as a defender. Strang is a good runner. And he's out at the 39-yard line for eight yards. So he didn't elect to go the sideline route that time. Oh, no. They need to make up some ground. Pretty good athlete. Strang, six, one and a half, 201 pound junior. Shaky in the first three games, and in fact, didn't start one of those games. And they say that next year he should be one of Penn State's all time great quarterbacks. He has a kid behind him, a freshman, John Schaefer from Moeller High, that people say is going to be outstanding in about a year or two. Now, we have two number 20s on the Penn State roster. I think this is Emerson in at the tailback, not the pass, but they both have those numbers. This is John Williams for a first down at the Penn State 44. Earlier in the game, I said that DePasqua, son of the former uh, great uh, pit, pit player, Carl DePasqua, I said that he was in the game, but I note now that there is an Emerson number 20 as well as a DePasqua number 20, but I think it's Emerson the tailback rather than DePasqua the tight end. At any rate, John Williams is going to get a breather now, and Steve Smith, a freshman running back out of Clinton, Maryland, number 33, is in the Penn State lineup. 7.20 to play, third quarter, Washington leading Penn State 10 to 3 in this second annual Aloha Bowl. Emerson, again, I'm going to qualify it. Well, he's the one listed as the tailback. The other Emerson is listed as the tight end, I right. believe. Very strange you would have two fellows with the same number at this level of football, although after a point, you run out of numbers. Indicative of what may happen today. Bow goes left. Tim Robinson goes left. Tight end Bowman on the right side on second and nine at the 50. has Strang. I believe that Smith was supposed to have picked him up, but he didn't, and Strang is sacked again. Number 58, Nick Hayden, the center, was out that wide trying to block Browning after a time, and Browning just would not be blocked. Here he comes, number 99, 6'4", 241-pound senior. It is third and 18 as a result of that sack back at the Penn State 36-yard line as Washington's defense continues to come up with one big play after another. Six minutes to play, third quarter. 10-3, Washington. A third and 18. Way 
short of a first down at the 41-yard line is Steve Smith in the grasp of Tim Meander, and it's punt formation time. Washington will give the Nittany Lions that pass all day long. They've got double coverage on the speedy wide receivers. Their linebackers are quick enough to cover the short end, and that's what they're doing. They're giving them the short one. George Reynolds to punt, Michael Collins deep. This is Hill, dropped at the 25-yard line with five minutes and 19 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Washington is still in control of this game on a 39-yard punt by Reynolds and a five-yard return to the Washington 25. The score is 10-3, Washington leading Penn State, and we'll be back after this. I think we should credit Bob White, the freshman lineman, for getting his hands up, and I think that caused that pass to be just enough off-target intended for Patterson to be incomplete. You're absolutely right, Ray. Defensive linemen are taught when you can't get to the quarterback, at least get a hand in his face, and that's what happened that time. And Patterson drew double coverage across the way. He was going nowhere. This time, we have a wing back on the left. Now Jackson, Cookie Jackson, shifts to the deep spot, the tailback spot. Second and 10, and here goes Jackson. He has a first down, or very close to it, across the 35. Excellent blocking before Harry Hamilton made the tackle. Here's a look at it. 17, Hamilton, they run right by him. He came up to support on the run, but he turns around, doesn't give up, and Hamilton comes down to make the tackle, at least help on the tackle. There he is, number 17. That's good defense. And it is a first down. at the Washington 36. Five minutes to play, third quarter. On first down, Allure with a lot of room. First down, 49-yard line before Chris Sidner pins him down. And Ballor is not giving any ground either. He chose not to go down, as you see quarterbacks do these days. Right about here, he runs out of options. He has one option to run the ball. Patterson, his wide receiver, is down the field, running right at him now, waving his arm. He says, come on over here, I'll give you a block, and he does for 13 yards and a first down for the Huskies. Joe Paterno insisted that Washington was the best team in the Pac-10. That's what he said. This is a first and 10 play, and to the air on first down. Short gain on a pass complete to the Roy Lutu, the Honolulu senior tight end. Gain of about three to four yards. Washington, an excellent football team, but UCLA, who was going to the Rose Bowl, won the games that had to win. Washington would have been in the Rose Bowl had they beaten Washington State, but they couldn't do it. The freshman lineman, Bob White, who was caught inside when Pelour ran for that first down, is uh, now replaced at that defensive line spot. Second down, six at the Penn State 47. just a yard or so to the Penn State 45 where it will be third down and four. Patterson having a, an excellent game. Mark Patterson, the Seattle junior. Three minutes and 48 seconds remaining in what has been a scoreless third quarter. Washington is leading Penn State 10 to three. Steve Fleur, 14 of 25. is dropped by a wide open Leroy Lutu and it'll be fourth down. And that's a little bit embarrassing for Lutu. He's from Honolulu. So he came home and the one time they go to him he drops the pass he should have caught. Poor fella. So now it is fourth down. Kevin Bow dropping back to perform his specialty if he gets a chance to handle this punt but the way Cleland and Reynolds have been punting today this will be Thane Cleland. Another high snap. Oh, what a punt. Beautiful punt. What do they feed him? My goodness. That was over 60 yards in the air, although he'll only be credited with 44 because it went into the end zone. 
with 3.33 left to play in the third quarter. The score, Washington 10, Penn State 3. We'll return to Aloha Stadium after this. From Ford Special Vehicle Operations, the new Mustang SVO with a 175 horsepower turbocharged engine. Coney gas shocks, Goodyear NCT tires, four-wheel disc brakes, five speeds, articulated driving seats. The new Mustang SVO, the machine, speaks for itself. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? Hi. I can, a barbecue. Barbecue, it's winter. I know it's winter, but if you put Hunt's all-natural barbecue sauce on chicken and bake it in the oven, it's just like barbecuing. Oh, come on, Dick. How can it do that? Because Hunt's is full of chunks of real vegetables. It's thick, and the thicker the better. See, the brush doesn't sink. Brush, brush. Boy, I wish you could taste this. Mmm. Dick. Dick. Hunt's all-natural barbecue sauce. Try it in the oven. Can I, can I call you back? I'm, I'm a little tied up. Pan American, the first airline to the world. From Boston to Bombay, Austin to Zurich. Offensive lineman is in for Penn State, number 61, a junior from Elyria, Ohio, Brad Andrus. Penn State lost by way of injury. Todd Moles, their starter at that one guard spot, and Andrus is in, in that spot right now. First and 10, Penn State from the Penn State 20. Limited to just an early field goal in this game. first down. Now that time they had Dozier in a slot to the right. You know there's a time period as you see the Penn State line get off the ball. There's a time period when the ball is snapped that either one line or other out quicks the other. You know what I'm saying. That time Penn State got to the defense quicker than the defense were able to get to the offense. That made that play. It's good quick crisp blocking. Now they're back to the eye formation. This is for Bow. He has us out of bounds. He definitely had cornerback J.C. Pearson whip, but that ball sailed out of bounds and it's incomplete. That stops the clock with 3:03 to play in the third quarter. And now into the lineup, Bob, rather Rob Smith, a freshman, a freshman offensive lineman from Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. Tim Robinson is wide right. Kenny Jackson is wide left. Second and 10 from the Penn State 30. Dozier gets only three yards to about the 34 yard line and Lynn Madsen has him by uh, around the shoe tops and Penn State will have a third down and seven at the Penn State 34 yard line. Penn State also has a new center in there, number 79. Smith. We talked earlier about Nick Hayden, number 58, getting beat a lot by the middle guard, Madsen, for Washington. I don't know if, Ma if Hayden is hurt or not, but Smith is in there now. Third and seven. Kevin Bow. A great catch. And it's going to be ruled incomplete, Ray. Well, one of the officials said yes, another official said no. Well, this is that old reverse angle thing. The official across the way said he trapped the ball. You can't see it from here. It looks like he might have caught it just off the top of the grass or the artificial surface. The official long across the way said no. He trapped the ball. No play. So it's Reynolds' time to punt. Now, Washington is not dropping back that second man. They have just Michael Collins back there at the Washington 25. 2.22 to play, third quarter. Washington leading, 10-3. Big rush. Oh, they almost got it. But a fine punt inside the 20. And Penn State really covered that punt back at the 15-yard line. Now, that is one of the greatest shows of emotion, if you can judge it from this far away, that, you've, uh, that we've seen by Penn State. The score is 10-3. Washington leading, Penn State. We'll be back after this. 
Penn State has made a number of defensive changes during this timeout. Don Graham, number 53, a freshman linebacker from Pittsburgh. Scott Carraher, a senior defensive lineman from Emmaus, Pennsylvania, number 77. Mike Russo, a freshman. Ballure on first down. He's throwing for Patterson. In very close pursuit was Chris Sidner as Washington went for everything on first down. Steve Fuller let a lot of air out of the ball on that one. And we have a second and 10 from the Husky 15. 2.03 to play third quarter. Washington, tremendous domination, which I think was unexpected in the running department. This is Jacques Robinson getting only a yard or so. Number 28. I think Paterno has decided to try some guys who maybe haven't played a whole lot this year. They're sure getting a lot more emotion from this group of players than they did from the, the group that had been in there. Robinson, five carries, 10 yards so far. And wouldn't it be ironic that that pass reception that was not allowed to bow might spur the Nittany Lions? They seem to be more emotional right now. This is a third down and eight. to Skransky at the 31-yard line. Pelour right on target under heavy pressure. A beautiful pass, and it's a first down for Washington. Skransky wasn't double covered. He was triple covered. Here's the rush, and now you're looking at number 81. That's Leroy Lutu. Kind of a decoy. The pass goes to Skransky, and the second-leading receiver for the Huskies gets him a first down. Just over a minute left to play in the third quarter. Hill is wide to the left. New wide receiver. First and ten play. Here's Jacques Robinson and he's nailed behind the line by that freshman Don Graham from Pittsburgh. Number 53. Here's the handoff to Robinson. Nothing up the middle. So he tries to cut outside but he's just not quick enough at that point. Graham, who was just a freshman, comes in there, full of emotion, makes the stop for a loss of two. Second down, 12 from the Husky, 29. Less than 30 seconds to play in the third quarter. Washington leading Penn State 10 to 3. Stransky, three-man rush, a lot of time. Pass complete to Patterson. No gain. And there's no doubt about it. Right now, this Penn State defense I'm not uh, here to judge how well they're playing as far as execution is concerned. But I guarantee you, they are really playing with that wonderful word, emotion, which decides so many games. You can't play football without it. There's no way. You can react and perform beautifully, but if you do it without emotion, you're going to get beat. It is now a third and 12. There was a, no gain on the last play. Tony Roten and it's fourth down. Now let's see if the Penn State defense will be able to transform that emotion to the offense with 12 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Well, the way the kickers are kicking the ball today, it's going to be difficult. Both punters have been remarkably long and high, good hang time. And although now the Husky punter, Thane Cleveland, will be standing back at his own 15. Punting to Kenny Jackson and Kevin Bow. It was a very good acting job by Cleveland that time, but referee Jack Gatto was right there, and he said, no way. So a very short punt, and Penn State will have fantastic field position after just a 14-yard punt occasioned by a tremendous rush as four seconds to show on the clock remaining in the third quarter, and this is the best field position that Penn State's had all day when they take over the football. the way Joe Paterno and company they've seen the Nittany Lions almost totally stymied by a tremendous Washington defense Jackson 
Jackson to the right and Bow to the left. Here's the reverse to Jackson. He has blockers. And he's inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. So it's Kenny Jackson, who's been pretty well shut down as a pass receiver, runs the flanker reverse. If ever there was a time for something different, now is it. Paterno made some changes defensively, stopped the Huskies. Now they come back with a little razzle-dazzle, and now they're fired up. And that's the end of the third quarter of the score. Washington 10, Penn State 3. We'll be back after this. The Springfield Tire Company will be sponsoring our most valuable player award today, a $1,000 check being awarded in the name of today's MVP to the university's general scholarship fund. Now, Joe and I will be selecting the Kelly Springfield most valuable player just before the end of the game. Penn State, first and 10, Washington 34-yard line as we start the fourth quarter. Strang being rushed. And pass incomplete. They're going to throw a flag down. And I think intentional grounding just might be the call. That's going to be a real close call because number 44, John Williams was in the area, and look at Williams, tears off his helmet, or actually Dozier, I think. Dozier tore off his helmet. He's trying to say, no, no, that wasn't grounding. So uh, Jack Gatto, the referee and crew, still discussing the situation. And the reason this is controversial is because the referee didn't throw the flag until well after the play was over. Well, let's see what the call is. The line of scrimmage was the 34-yard line. There was an eligible receiver in the area. There was an eligible receiver in the area. Sure, John Williams was there. So a lot of credit to our referee. He just picked up the flag and put the back in his hip pocket. Here's 44 blocking. Dozier is out in the pattern as well, both on the same side. And here comes the defense. And there's 44, eligible receiver in the area. Second down 10. It was merely an incomplete pass. Will there be another blitz? A little draw, Mrs. Williams getting to about the 30-yard line where Penn State will have, I think, just about every third down now, regardless of what team has the ball, with Washington leading by seven, every third down is going to be critical from this point forward. Third and six at the Washington 30. We're two plays into the fourth quarter. Jackson and Bow both held in check by Washington's defense today, both drawing double coverage now. Third and six. Tight end, Demidio holds on to the ball at the 22-yard line for a Penn State key first down. Quarterback J.C. Pearson had to make a decision while the ball was in the air. Do I go for the interception or do I go for the tackle? You see him timing his leap right there. He goes for the tackle, but Demidio has the first down. That's Demidio's fourth pass today. All four have gotten the Lions first down. Now Skeeter Nichols, number 24, a running back, is in the game in place of Williams. Robinson is in as a wide receiver in place of Bow. First and 10, Penn State. Jackson in motion. Dozier leans for two yards. His longest gain today has been seven yards. This young man who gained over 1,000 yards as a freshman running back at Penn State during the regular season, and he winds up in the grasp of Ron Holm. Who else? And Dozier, by the way, is a true freshman, not a redshirt freshman. A year ago, he was home celebrating the holidays just in the middle of his high school career. The fourth quarter has not been kind to the Nittany Lions so far. This second half has been scoreless. The scoreboard read 10-3 at halftime, and it does right now, with 13 minutes and 15 seconds left in the game. Second and eight, Penn State at the Washington 20. Here comes the pressure. Penalty flag inside the five. Jackson, I think. The intended receiver, along with Bow, they were running a crossing pattern, but a flag down inside the five. Well, I tell you what, I didn't see any contact at all. There might have been some shoving with an elbow or something. We'll see the replay. We'll take a look for yourself. Three officials down there, along with the Washington players. Ah, what a break for Penn State if it is P.I. 
Jackson and Bow were in the general vicinity. Here's the referee. Disregard the flag. Well, that's the second time in the last several moments we've had a flag drop that they said to disregard. And now Penn State will have a third and eight at the Washington 20. Well, then you don't need a replay because nothing happened. I was looking and there wasn't anything going on down at the five yard line. They just made a mistake again. And Joe Paterno looks like a man who would like to have an explanation. Yes, he would. Look at him. He's from Brooklyn. You can tell, I told you, he had to change those pants. Those are terrible luck. And he is really upset. As third down and eight for the Nittany Lions. 13.04 left in the game. The second annual Aloha Bowl has been a bitterly fought defensive struggle with Washington having the edge and leading 10 to three. But now yet another critical third down. Skeeter Nichols, number 24, is in the backfield. Dozier, number 42. Jackson to the left. Down he goes. Lynn Madsen and Fred Small blitzing Strang. And it's going to be fourth down. Back at the 33-yard line. That's the fourth sack on Strang today. And keep in mind, the nose guard was one of the guys who got in. Madsen, 68, along with left side linebacker Fred Small. That's a nose guard with that kind of quickness. Is he excited or what? Nick Gensitano will apparently be attempting a 49 and a half yard field goal. He has a long of 45. It appears to have the distance. It's good. So Penn State has its second field goal. That changes the score to 10-6. The Huskies leading, and I just believe we're going to have 12 minutes and 21 seconds more of very emotional, hard-hitting football. The score, 10-6, Washington leading Penn State. We'll be back after this. Lonzel Hill and Cookie Jackson will be the two return men for Washington with 12 minutes and 21 seconds left to play. Boy, that kicking game has sure kept Penn State in the ball game. Of course, Paterno commits four scholarships to his kicking game. That's how important he regards that aspect of his football team. Incident. And he's still chirping at the referee over there. He sure is. A very special thank you to First Tours in Van Nuys, California. They made the travel arrangements for the entire Metro Sports staff and crew to this beautiful island of Hawaii for this classic bowl game. The kick in the direction of Jackson, and he will not run it out. So Gonsatano does his job, and now the Washington offense with the uh, very obvious task control the football. It's been in the main a short passing game complemented by a satisfactory running game that has enabled Washington to maintain the lead. Although the only touchdown in this game was a 56-yard punt return by Danny Green of Washington who was then subsequently injured and has not returned to action. First and ten from the Husky 20. down by Sidner after a gain of about five. They got a lot of people out in front of him that time and we have that looks like Hines is down. Yes it is. Hines a senior from Toronto. In fact he runs for the Canadian Olympic team. And Danny Green is going back in the game for the first time. Number 80. First time we've seen him since midway in the first half. Meanwhile running back Sterling Hines who has the kind of speed that we can say that he could well be a member of the Canadian national team in the upcoming Olympic Games. He has that kind of blinding short distance speed and he's the tailback injured and receiving attention across the way with 12 minutes left to play in the second annual Aloha Bowl where Washington's defense has held Penn State to two field goals. Penn State's defense meanwhile let's face it has limited Washington to just a field goal with the exception of the brilliant punt return by Danny Green. Right, the MVP is going to have to be a defender. On Hines, by the way, he runs a 10-300, a 21 flat 220. He had 188 yards against Stanford earlier this year, 131 against Oregon. Today, he's carried the ball 10 times for 34 yards. So you see it's been a defensive ball game. 
Hines on his feet now. It appears he's flexing his one knee, his right knee. Governor George Ariyoshi, the governor of the state of Hawaii. And we heard it mentioned earlier that uh, the 25th year of statehood by Hawaii will be celebrated in the upcoming year. Right, 1984, big year for this state. Hines appears to be okay. He's kind of gingerly walking off the field and began trying to jog off, and now he is jogging off the field, so he'll be back. It'll be second down and five for the Huskies from the Washington 25-yard line. 12 minutes to play in the game. And referee Jack Garrow says, let's go. Cookie Jackson, number 25, is now the tailback. The freshman, Finney, is the fullback. Addison in motion. Finney, close to a first down. And there is a belated flag. They throw a flag at number 70, Lance Dotson, a 6'4", 280-pound senior, who after the play was whistled dead, knocked the Nittany Lion out of his wallet. And Lance not too happy with that call, as you can see. This would be a very costly call because it appeared that Finney, if he didn't have the first down, he at least has set up a third and about a foot. Here's referee. Push the ball. Off there. Now, it occurred after the play. This means it will be third and long. It was a dead ball foul. So the ball goes back to the Washington 15. Now, will Washington risk putting the ball in the air on third and 25? They haven't changed the down marker yet. It still it shows first down. Oh, that he did make the first down. All right, it's now first and 25. There's the difference. The quarterbacks doubled the passing yardage and a bit more for Washington. Tight end, Tony Roten unable to hold on, and it will be. I want to make sure I explain that instead of it being third and 25. Finney had picked up the first down. Then came the foul, so it starts after the penalty at first and 25, and now it is second and 25. 11 minutes, 30 seconds remaining. 10-6, Washington leading. Out to the right comes Patterson. To the left, a still limping Danny Green. Finney in motion. Pelour is dropped behind the line by Gattuso and Hamilton. Well, they were really going after him that time. A lot of people were coming. The hero back of the strong safety, Harry Hamilton, number 17, was on a blitz. And when Pelour saw that, I don't know if it was a quarterback draw or not, but he pulled it back and tried to run with it and ran right into three other Nittany Lions. It's now third and 27. And Jacques Robinson replaces Cookie Jackson at the tailback spot. You get the feeling uh, Penn State's a little more emotional right now? Definitely so. Look where they have the Huskies at the 12 or 13. Third and 27. Didn't pick up any first down, but some valuable yardage was picked up as the tackle was made by Matt Antonio on the tight end, Roten. So now the punting will be done by Cleveland to Bow and to Jackson. 10 minutes and 28 seconds remaining. Washington clinging to a 10-6 lead. There, number 82 is Kenny Jackson. Number 11, Kevin Bow. Fane Cleland to punt. He's got to kick it to the end zone if he can. I know he can't, but boy, I'd hate to be kicking off to these fellas. Kevin Bow, Penn State 35 now, 40, 50. He's at the Washington 46-yard line on a fine return. A 46-yard punt and a 23-yard return. The score, Washington 10, Penn State 6. We'll be back after this. Returned by Kevin Bow. Has the ball first and 10 at the Washington 46-yard line. And Metro Sports will continue to bring the best in college basketball in 1984 with the Big East Conference. Check your local TV listings for the time and station in your area. There we show you some of the games coming up. First and 10 for the Nittany Lions. Big to 
Dozier. Screen pass intended, but a big rush on Strang, and the pass a little bit too high, and it will be second and ten, as Penn State definitely wants to get the ball to their multi-talented D.J. Dozier. And Holmes and Matson are not going to let him. Boy, they put on a heck of a rush that time. The left tackle of the nose guard again. Not often you see a nose guard with the speed and quickness of a Lynn Matson. Second down and 10 at the Washington 46. Not a chance. Tim Robinson in the general area, but the ball appeared to sail on Strang, and it will be third and 10. Well, you see what Washington has done. They've really shut down the running game, and they're forcing Penn State to put it up. And even though they're putting more emphasis on the passing game in the last couple of years, the running game is still their forte. But it's been taken away, so they've got to pass. Don James from the near sidelines looks on, and a pacing Joe Paterno across the way. Third and ten. Will there be a blitz? Doug Strang couldn't get it to Kenny Jackson. Jackson was open. So it's going to be Reynolds' time as Penn State comes up empty after three consecutive passes. And the nose guard, Matson got to Strang that time, put him down after the pass. How do you break up an MVP trophy for three guys? Tony Alvarado will be the punt returner if there's going to be a return. Number one at the Washington 10. Credit Penn State's number 62. Stillman is the last name, but I want to be sure and give him credit because Mike Stillman, a junior from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, made an all-out effort, and the result was a great play. Right, he knocked it back or keeps it in the field of play right there. A little volleyball push. Heads-up play by Penn State. So now Washington will be backed up to the Husky five-yard line. Nine minutes and 32 seconds remaining. Washington, the winner last year, in the closing seconds by one point over Maryland, leads Penn State by four. Good gain on first down from the five to the nine, where Shane Conlon, one of the hosts of young players getting a chance for game action today. Second half, total yardage. Penn State 71. On the year, the Lions are averaging, were averaging almost 371 a game. Here's the fullback. Dragged down at the 13, and a critical third and three will be coming up for Washington. Now, Stransky will check into the game, and Lutu. Stransky, wide receiver, number nine. Lutu, number 81, tight end. Third down, three Washington at the Husky 13. Both wide receivers, Patterson and Stransky, go left. Here is Jackson, and he is very close to a first down, just shy of the 16. Penn State defender Greg Gattuso was all over the official on the sideline who marked that charge, and he marked it just beyond the point of that red arrow. That may give him the first down. Of course, they'll have to measure. The interesting thing here will be, if it's short, whether James would elect to go for it. It'll be fourth There's still and a inches. lot of time left, 8.26 oh, yeah. to play. If he does, it'll be fourth and inches if it's not a first down. Running to the weak side. Penn State has been pretty balanced this year offensively. They've averaged 187 yards rushing, 184 yards passing. And it is a first down. And they've also averaged 25 points a game, as have the Huskies. But today, it's been a defensive struggle. 10-6 Washington. First and 10, the Huskies. Staying on the ground for three consecutive plays, and it's first and 10 at the Washington 16. Huskies, no, 
there have an unblemished record when leading at halftime as they did today. They were leading 10-3 at the half. Here's Finney. And the freshman running back out of Snohomish, Washington. Playing in place of Walt Hunt, who has uh, not made his appearance today because of a hernia that he suffered. Here's the dean of Pac-10 coaches, Don James. Only 38 losses in nine years. Second down, eight. Will Palour go to the air? Yes. Through the hands of Finney with Hamilton closing in, and now Washington really has to make a tough decision on third and eight. To the air, on the ground, maybe a draw, seven minutes and 48 seconds left. And Steve Pelour, who has not been intercepted today. How many, what, just eight interceptions all season long? Eight, eight all up? year, Ray, only eight all year, but he went 137 in a row without getting intercepted. That came within 12 of the Pac-10 record held by a USC quarterback. Third down, eight. Addison in motion. Short of a first down, considerably. Gattuso in on the tackle. Along with Scott Radisick, and it's fourth down. So Penn State limits Washington to the one first down, and now with over seven minutes to play, it appears that Thane Cleland will be punting the ball away to Bow or Jackson. There they are around the Penn State 40-yard line. They're sneaking up a bit right now. They're not expecting a long punt. Good height. Kevin Bow. Penn State 38. There goes Jackson. And he has it around the Penn State 48-yard line. Once again, good field position on a 41-yard punt and a 12-yard return. The score is 10-6, Washington leading. Penn State has the ball. We'll be back after this. Lights are turned on at Aloha Stadium as Joe Paterno talks with his players. First and 10, Penn State at the Penn State 49-yard line. Six minutes and 54 seconds remaining. Penn State led on a Gansitano field goal, 3-0. Washington took the lead and has clung to that lead. A punt return, 56 yards by Green, put Washington ahead. Dozier went in motion. And this is Dozier with the ball. He's down to the 42-yard line, a nine-yard pickup. That was a little bit uh, a little bit different scheme of things than we've seen so far. Well, they needed something different. I'm surprised they haven't tried this earlier because they say when you get Dozier in the open field, he's very, very effective. And here, that's exactly what they're doing. A little swing pass, get the man wide open. Now, be creative, do something upfield, and he does. He picked up nine yards. Why they haven't done it sooner, I don't know. Clock running, just over six minutes left. Second and one, Washington 42. Williams... First down at the 38-yard line of Washington. Lynn Madsen, ever-present. That middle guard from Vista, California, made the tackle. We're going to pause for station identification on the Aloha Bowl television network. This is WPHL-TV, Channel 17, Philadelphia. Tim Robinson to the right in place of Jackson. Kevin Bow to the left. First and 10, Penn State at the Washington 38. Oh, great defense. Pass was intended for Robinson, but a big hit by J.C. Pearson, and it's going to be... I think he wanted to go that time to Dozier again in the right flat, but he was being shadowed. They put a man on him this time. Of course, once you show it and it works, it probably won't work for another couple of plays. Dozier being covered one-on-one -on -one out in the flat. The pass broken up by J.C. Pearson, who has three interceptions this year. And he didn't try and intercept that one, just trying to knock it down, and he did beautifully. The clock stopped with 5.49 left. Second and 10 Penn State at the Washington 38. Here goes Williams, but not very far to the 36-yard line. And now Penn State will have a third and eight. 
somebody had to stay home and make a good play that time. Among others, Tim Meamber, the linebacker. Third and eight, and here comes tight end Dean Demidio into the game, number 89, replacing Kirk Bowman. All right, keep an eye on Demidio now. Whenever they've needed a first down in critical situations, they've gone to him. He has caught four today, each one for a first down. So keep an eye on number 89, the tight end on your left. Bow and Jackson are to the right. A third down and eight. Penn State trailing 10-6. This is Strang, and he has a first down at the 24-yard line. An excellent job of seeing the whole field and seeing no one open, and Strang runs for a first down at the Washington 24-yard line. That's the beauty of having a quarterback who is a great athlete. Nobody open over the middle, nobody to his right. So what the heck, he's going to run it. Gained 13 yards for the first down as Washington was clearly playing the pass. So first and 10 at the Washington 24-yard line. Clock running less than five minutes to play. 10-6 Washington. Slot left is Dozier. The defender was Pearson. The intended receiver was Jackson. Let's see which way the call is. Well, Washington is celebrating like it's against Penn State. It's not automatically defensive interference. No, we that's must right. keep that in mind. Pass interference. Offense. Wow. That's right. Good call. Good call. There's a reason why the defender fell down in the corner of the end zone. I think Jackson pushed him. Take a look here. Pass is right on the money. There's the push. Little push with a forearm shiver. That's all you need. And the official right, right there. Right there, the push before he got into the end zone. You saw the official go to his back pocket before the pass even came down. So the penalty against Penn State, 15 yards to the 39-yard line. Paterno is talking Italian now. And I will not translate. Loss of down. It, is, down. it is now second and 25. The ball just inside the Washington 40. Four minutes and 34 seconds remaining in the second annual Aloha Bowl. Jackson goes right. Kevin Bow comes left. This is Williams. He's down to the 20-yard line where it will be third and six. Now, there was a great call and great execution. Boy, they needed this in the worst way. 19-yard gain coming up on the little swing pass to number 44, John Williams, who runs in the open field about as well as anyone. He's listed as a fullback, but he used to be a tailback for Paterno. And he now gives way to number 24, Skeeter Nichols. It is third down. Six and a half for a first down. The ball just short of the Washington 20 with 3.50 left in the game. And the clock running. 10-6, Washington. What a great finish to a great ball game. This is Kevin Bow to the four-yard line. It's first and goal. And that time, Strang, under heavy pressure from Ron Holmes, delivered the ball right on target. Well, Bow is their number one receiver. They've been picking a number four cornerback, J.C. Pearson, all day long. Bow finally beats him on a crossing pattern, makes a nice catch with the hands. Didn't try and catch it with his body, caught it with his hands, and is tackled at the five. So now it is first and goal, Penn State. The clock is running with three and a half minutes left. Ten, six, Washington digging in. This is the power eye. Whoop. Number 92, Scott Garnett, came charging across the line. Was he drawn across? We shall see. Penn State is signaling that it's against Washington. As Take a look at number 61. You can't see why well, you can't even see him. He's on the other side of the center, the guard. And Garnett just puts him on his wallet. Enforcement. It is against Garnett and the defense. This moves the ball to the two-yard line where it will be first and goal. Now this 
is an offensive formation that Penn State likes to use where they have three running backs in the game. No flankers, no wide receivers. They have Skeeter Nichols, 24, Williams, 44, Dozier, 42. Two tight ends as well, two tight ends. Down. Penn State takes the lead for the second time today. Exactly three minutes show on the clock at the Aloha Bowl. So under darkening skies and with the lights on, be prepared for even more excitement as a Penn State player is down. Maybe we can pick up his number with our glasses. It was a long day for Dozier up until here. Nothing inside a guard, though he goes over the tackle spot between the tackle and tight end and dives in. Still don't know who the injured Penn State player is, though. We can't see him. When play resumes, Nick Gansitano, who has provided Penn State with its six points up until that touchdown, will be trying for the extra point. In the way of extra points this season, he is 34 of 36. There's and Dozier, and he's going to celebrate. It's a long day for that freshman. Is Yeah, I finally got one, folks. Number 24, Skeeter Nichols. One of the Penn State running backs was the player shaken up, but he runs off the field without any aid, and we're just about ready for the extra point try. 34 of 36, as we mentioned, in extra points this season. The holder for Penn State is a reserve quarterback, Fickinger. Tom Fickinger. Penn State leads by three, and the contingent who traveled here from Pennsylvania lets out a mighty roar from across the way, the several thousand who are here. So the score now, Penn State 13, Washington 10. We'll have more great football action live from Hawaii right after this. We have three minutes of action remaining here in the second annual Aloha Bowl. And after what transpired here last year, when with seconds remaining, Washington was able to defeat Maryland by one point. We certainly are not uh, writing off this one as uh, being in the old bag as far as Penn State is concerned. Cookie Jackson and Lonzel Hill are back for Gansatano's kickoff. This will not be run out. Gansitano does a good job again. So it'll be Washington from the 20. Now, so far, Washington's passing attack has been a controlled, short passing game. Whether that will be sufficient now with only three minutes remaining, we shall see. Washington from the Husky 20. Well, we've only seen one trick play, so to speak, from either team today. That's reversed on the flanker by Penn State. Washington has a few of those type plays in their arsenal. We may see that once they get further downfield. They will start with a slot formation with Finney in the slot, and Jock Robinson is the running back. Patterson to the 24-yard line where Sidner makes a hit. Now, that time, big pressure was being, being put on by Penn State. They were coming with a lot of people. Well, he only had one setback to block. Here comes the blitz by Hamilton. Good pass, run right on the money, good tackle, four-yard gain. Second down, six. Clock running, 235 left to play. Here comes the pressure. Hamilton that time forced the pass off target intended for Lutu, but Scott Radisick was right with the intended receiver. So now Washington is faced with a third and six. The clock stops with 224 remaining. 13 to 10, Penn State trying for its fifth consecutive bowl victory. The NC2A record is six in a row. Nine plays, 51 yards for the touchdown by Penn State. This is a third and six. A lot of time. This is Robinson. And he's short of a first down. He ran out of bounds at the 27-yard line. He gave up a couple of yards to run out of bounds. Instead of turning up field, he ran to the sideline, but had to give up a couple of yards and then run sideways. Is there a flag down? Yes, at the near sideline. Yeah, there is. Maybe yeah. it's a flag. I can't quite tell. It's either a flag or a broken leg. 
Doesn't look like a flag, but I guess it is. Ooh, a penalty against Penn State, and I thought I detected a, was it a signal of a holding penalty. Yes, it was. Defensive hold. Time left, two minutes, 18 seconds. So instead of it being fourth and three, it's a first down at the Washington 35. Defensive holding automatic first down. So a reprieve for Washington. Stransky goes wide left. Patterson is wide right. Danny Green has made only a token appearance since sustaining an injury in the first half. He scored the Washington touchdown on a punt return. One of the officials over uh, responding to some questioning by head coach Joe Paterno. Patterson in motion. Right in the hands of a Penn State defender Cinder couldn't hold on at the Penn State 38-yard line. You know, he was so concerned about staying in bounds that he dropped the football. He was right on the sideline, I mean, right next to it, and was so concerned about staying in, just tippy-toeing in bounds, he dropped the football. Good protection, not a very good pass. Intended for Patterson way over his head. Now watch this. Am I in or am I out? Whoops, I lost the ball. <laughs> David Trimble, number 23, is in as a wide receiver to the left. And Lonzel Hill, number 15, is wide right. Second and 10. Here comes the pressure. The pass was intended that time for Cookie Jackson out of the backfield. It will be third and 10 at the Washington 35 with two minutes and four seconds remaining. And if perchance you just joined us in what has been a surprisingly low scoring game, Penn State is leading Washington 13 to 10. Not that we've been without heroics, but most of them have been defensive heroics. Patterson is wide left. Good protection. Almost intercepted by Sindner. There was excellent defense there that time by Penn State's Mike Souter, number 35. And now Washington is down to a fourth and 10 with one minute and 57 seconds remaining. Triple coverage that time, and he tried to force it in there, really rifle the ball. And you saw what happened, fourth and 10, gotta go for it. To the left will go Patterson, to the right is Stransky. Fourth down, and Penn State has the football. Very interesting thing just now happened. Greg Gattuso was putting tremendous pressure on Steve Pelour, and as 16, Pelour got up, he and Gattuso just automatically extended hands and shook hands with each other. Penn State has the football and a three-point lead. And if they can hang on to it, they'll win the ball game. Haven't had a fumble today, Ray. I don't I can't remember a fumble. The only interception was one of the most unique you'll ever <laughs> see. It went through the hands of a defender, Kenny or a receiver, Kenny Jackson hit the head of Al Britton, a defending back, then intercepted by another defending player. That's been the only uh, turnover. This is Skeeter Nichols protecting the ball with both arms wrapped around it. Now, if they can't be so conservative that they don't get a first down, they have a minute, 47 seconds to go. That's a long time. So and they've got to do something with it. And Washington now takes a timeout, and Penn State immediately sends in wide receivers instead of going with that very conservative full house backfield or power eye, whatever you want to call it. They're going to bring in the wide receivers. That play gained only a yard, and we're in the midst of a Washington timeout. And Don James, who lost a tremendous number of seniors from last year's fine team, the team that won the Aloha Bowl from Maryland, Don James looks on. What did he say last night? He lost 36 seniors. That's right. My goodness. And what a job he's done to rebuild. Of course, that's good recruiting. You always point for the day when you lose a lot of good people. And James, Paterno, all the great coaches do that. They recruit for the future. And both teams today have been giving extensive playing time to their younger players. 
when play resumes at the end of this Washington call timeout. Penn State will have a second and nine at the Washington 34, but with their wide receivers back in the game. One minute, 47 seconds remaining. To the right goes Jackson. To the left is Kevin Bow. It was his pass reception that set up the Penn State go-ahead touchdown. Dozier to the 29 and a fumble, but a fumble occurred before the whistle blew. The ball was down. It is ruled that Dozier had hit this artificial turf at the 29-yard line to set up a third down and four. And now Washington takes another timeout. I wish I'd have made a note as to whether that is their final timeout or whether they have one remaining. Ray, I wish I could help you. I really don't know. I've been concerned with other things, although I can't remember this. Seems like they've only taken two this half. When play resumes, it will be a third down and four. We can't say enough, we being Joe Butita and, and myself, and we say in behalf of all of our Metro Sports family about the marvelous hospitality we have enjoyed here during our stay in Honolulu. And we want to say thank you to the staffs of these two fine universities. Athletic Director Mike Lude of Washington, Don James, the head football coach, and his staff. Mike Wilson, Sports Information Director. Gene Granger, the Associate Sports Information Director. Our special thanks to the Pac-10 Conference Office, their Executive Director Tom Hansen, David Price, who is here today, and for Penn State University, Athletic Director Jim Tarman, Head Football Coach Joe Paterno and his staff, Sports Information Director David Baker. As you might suspect, an awful lot of people are involved in the telecast of a game such as this. Penn State third and four, Washington 29. One minute and 32 seconds remaining in the game. will be fourth down with one minute and 27 seconds left. Now, what do you do if you're Penn State, Joe? I try, I try a field goal, I think. Conchitano is a, a proven veteran. He's done it time after time. But I guess I'm going to be out guessed. They're not going to do it. They're going to go for it on fourth and nine. The six day is third down. The first down six day, fourth down. They better change that on the field. It's third down and it is fourth down. It is for well, then the scoreboard's wrong. Yes, the scoreboard Boy, is wrong. wrong. It is fourth and four. That's what I thought. But they're going to go for it. Dozier has the first down. D.J. Dozier held pretty much in check today. Gets a very big first down with time running out. I think you could almost say that the insertion of some of the young players defensively turned this game around emotionally for Penn State. Yeah, some of the starters were just not getting the job done for one reason or another. I think Paterno took some of them out, said, look, sit on the sideline, take a look at what's happening out there, let some of the youngsters play, and then they'll put them back in and see what happens. First and 10, Penn State. The clock running, less than a minute to play. This will be a delay of game penalty against Penn State. As Joe Paterno looks on, we announce that the most valuable player, the Kelly Springfield most valuable player, and a $1,000 check will be awarded in his name to the university's general scholarship fund. It is defensive lineman Lynn Madsen from Vista, California, who has just been absolutely brilliant albeit in a losing effort for the University of Washington. And we're delighted to make that announcement. That's a tough call, Ray, really is, because in the first half, Ron Holmes was so dominant. There's Madsen, 6'3", 250, senior. Strang keeps the ball as the final seconds tick away. Sincere thanks to one person above all, Mackie Yanagasawa. Without Mackie, there would be no Aloha Bowl. There would be no, and then you can fill in ever so many great events here in Hawaii. 
He is absolutely indefatigable, giving of himself, of his time, and his talents. And we say thank you, Mackey. You again have been just wonderful. Here's another look at Lynn Manson, our choice as player of the game, who, by the way, is an accomplished pianist. Very talented young man. Another Mike Reed. Remember Mike Reed, who yeah. came out of Penn State as a great player and went on to considerable success in professional football before he elected to follow his real love, a musical career. Uh -huh. And he's now an outstanding songwriter, by the way, in Nashville, Tennessee. So uh, who knows what awaits Glenn Madsen, a senior, playing at the middle guard spot. He's just been consistently, all of this game, been able to beat the block sometimes the blocks because that middle guard is consistently double teamed and he's gotten in the backfield four or five times to run down the quarterback for a middle guard that's amazing 51 seconds left now strang knowing that washington can take no more timeouts one more snap one more snap one more getting down on the turf by quarterback Doug Strang, and this game will be over. And Penn State will have won its fifth consecutive postseason bowl game. But Paterno across the way is not allowing any, any celebrations yet. He's walking up and down, saying, just keep it cool for another 20 seconds, fellas, then we'll celebrate. It's not over yet. And here is the last snap of the game. We're down now to the clock running. 10 seconds. The players from both teams are headed out onto the field. A very physical, very physical, very well-played defensive battle is won by Penn State over the Huskies of Washington as Washington makes a return to the same stadium where they last year won the first Aloha Bowl by a single point over Maryland. And so we have reached the end of the game and the final score. Penn State University 13, Washington University 10. We'll be back with our final comments after this. It's because of the defense of Washington, but they got the big uh, screen pass, I think we called it, to William Clayton in the third quarter, or fourth quarter, and that really turned it around and gave them the momentum and the, uh, the anxiety to run and win this football. They were not a very emotional football team most of the game until they thought they could win it. And when they thought they could win it, they went on and did. So for all of us here with Metro Sports, we've had a delightful stay. We hope that we've been able to transmit in some way uh, the extreme pleasure we've had in spending a few days in Hawaii with the great hospitality of the Aloha Bowl Committee that was thrown up.